rivals get together, it usually means fireworks. But last year's West Virginia Pitt game was more. It was the stuff of legends, a triple overtime thriller. Gonzalez to the end zone, it's caught, touchdown! In 1998, Walt Harris's Panthers have struggled to duplicate last year's success, but this young team knows that they can make their season with an upset win today. For Don Nealon and the Mountaineers, they'll ride the strong legs of Amos Saraway as they look for one more Big East win before bowl season begins. The Backyard Brawl, West Virginia, Pittsburgh on CBS. degrees and sunny where over 40,000 are expected to watch the 91st backyard brawl West Virginia and Pitt. And the West Virginia Mountaineers, here they come last week victorious over Boston College 35 to 10. They are bowl bound. everybody. Welcome to Pittsburgh. I'm Gus Johnson along with John Dockery for the West Virginia Mountaineers. A win today guarantees them a bowl appearance and Doc, they've got some explosive players on offense, especially some guy named uh, Amos. Amos, and if you're a West Virginia fan, there's a lot to be thankful for on this holiday weekend including Amos Zeroway. His third straight 1,000 yard plus season, five and a half yards a carry, and when you see his twisting, turning, explosive style shades of Barry Sanders Sanders. Amos Zeroway is a real deal for the Mountaineers. Now along with Zeroway, they've seen their quarterback blossom. Mark Bolger, a Pittsburgh native. Boy, is he having a nice season. And it's not only Mark Bolger who completes over 60% of his passes in a career. It's also four outstanding wide receivers. So West Virginia has firepower on the ground and through the air. Different story for Pittsburgh after winning six games a season ago and advancing to the Liberty Bowl. They've struggled 0-6 in the big East, there's no tomorrow for them. Gus, you said it before, this is their bowl game, a chance to salvage their season. They're 2-8, and eight, and if they're going to win today and stay in this game, their quarterback, Matt Lytle, has to get it done for them. Left-handed, a strong arm, and he has kind of that uh, Brunel-type scrambling ability. So for Pittsburgh today, it's on this man's shoulder, their quarterback, Lytle. Now let's join the third member of our team, roaming the sidelines today, Gary Apple. All right, Gus, thanks very much. You know, it's not very often that Pittsburgh plays here at Three Rivers Stadium. In four previous appearances, they are 2-2, two and two, and so they hope for good fortunes today. Last time they played here, uh, 16 years ago, let's go back, look who was at the helm. Dan Marino, Pitt came in ranked number one in America, and they stayed that way. This was his only touchdown pass of the game as number one Pittsburgh beat Carolina 7-6. to six. A couple of late injury updates. Hank Poteet, the right quarter, will not start for Pitt. He's got a bad knee. And of course, Phil Clark, who missed last week, the inside linebacker, will not play again. He has a strained groin. They will miss him trying to contain uh, Amos Zeroway. Gus, John, back upstairs to you. All right, Gary. The coach is Don Nealon, 19th year at West And a series note, Pittsburgh and West Virginia one season ago. What a barn burner. The Panthers coming back to win it down in Morgantown. Four Went to a bowl game, first time they had done that for eight years. High expectations coming into this year for Walt Harris in his second year as coach of, of Pittsburgh. Haven't been able to live up to him. So as we just mentioned, this is a huge game. They could get some momentum and feel good about the future if they could knock off West Virginia here today. Pitt has won the toss and West Virginia will receive the football. Pitt 
deferring until the second half of play. And back deep for the Mountaineers, number five, Antonio Brown, and number 20, Amos Zaraway. There's Antonio Brown, the freshman out of Miami Central High School. And doing the kicking for the Panthers, Nick Lotz. I thought Gary Apple's point in his pregame report was well taken in that on defense, you look at the Pittsburgh Panthers and their fine cornerback, six interceptions, Hank Poteet is out. He has a sprained left knee, and also their best linebacker, senior Phil Clark, is also out, so they're going to have some problems again. It's an explosive Mountaineer offense. West Virginia, Pittsburgh, the backyard brawl underway from Three Rivers Stadium. Zeroway from the one. Amos Zeroway spinning to the 20 yard line. A return of 20 yards. On the field for West Virginia, their quarterback, Mark Bolger, a junior. He's from Pittsburgh, played high school football at Central Catholic, the same high school as Dan Marino. And Doc, this young man, ranked 12th in the nation in passing, and he's making his first start in his hometown. In his hometown, and he has some terrific wide receivers, four of them to be exact, but Foreman and Saunders are two of the best in the history of West Virginia football. First down and 10 from the 21-yard line, out of the eye formation. Zeroway is the deep back. Play action on first down. Bolger underneath that. It's caught. Sean Foreman with the catch. Turns it up to the 34-yard line. A gain of 13 yards. And offensively for the Mountaineers, the backs and receivers, David Saunders, Sean Foreman, the most prolific wide receivers in West Virginia history. And up front, they have four seniors on the offensive line. Eric DeGroe, the center, is the anchor. And an injured player on the field. You just introduced that West Virginia offensive lineup. It's got such terrific balance. I mean, they run the ball well, as we just talked about with Zeroway. They throw it well with Bulger and to Foreman and Saunders, two of the best. And uh, we'll take a look right here and see if we can see what happened on that particular play and injury. Hard to note what happened there. Looks like Tracy Creighton, starting left cornerback, may be the injured player on the field for Pittsburgh. And that would be a tremendous blow. Their right corner, as you mentioned, already out of the game with a knee problem, Hank Poteet. And it was hard to see on that angle, but if it is Creighton, both cornerbacks will be out. Both, uh, you know, Poteet, a uh, junior, and Tr Creighton, a uh, senior, uh, one of their best players in that secondary. So this would be devastating against a real high-powered uh, Mountaineer attack. And Gus, just talking about that attack for, uh, for a moment as we wait for uh, this injury to be cared for. It's so balanced, and you mentioned that offensive line across the middle, those three fifth-year seniors anchoring the middle, plus a good runner, a good quarterback. Scary moment on the field right now. Back to Pittsburgh after this. This is Pittsburgh left cornerback Trey Creighton, the senior. He gets hurt on this particular play. Watch him here. He gets caught under the pile as he goes to make a tackle. It's spun around, he's under that pile, and he's still down on the field here at Three Rivers Stadium. We don't know exactly what the injury is, but as you can see, he is being attended to right there. The scary part, Gus Johnson, is that he hasn't moved that much since he was caught underneath that pile. Very scary moment on the field right now, Trey Creighton from Oceanside, California, junior college transfer. First year at Pitt, became a starter. You know, Trey Creighton earlier this year, um, he's actually engaged to be married. His fiance is Shia Hale. Um, after the Penn State game, they were scheduled to be married. They postponed it till next May. Um, and things were just too hectic during the season. Um, now this moment, uh, one of the finer players on the defense for the University of Pittsburgh, their left cornerback. Final game for Creighton.
And it reminds you of the uh, last year, the Lions and Jets. The Lions linebacker going down. And This is something you worry about as a as a player. Uh, remember in all my years of playing in college and and the pros when when things like this happened, the game went into perspective. I mean, we're all very intense about it. Football players are very intense. The sport is very emotional. Obviously, a contact sport, and and there's some violence attached to it. But these are the things you worry about most. I mean, that something serious would happen. Appear to have them on the on the stretcher and, and for now everyone's concern is with Trey Creighton the left cornerback for Pittsburgh and the game is uh, secondary at the moment and for the players it's hard Gus to shift gears one moment you're excited about a the backyard brawl as this is called this rivalry and the next moment a teammate an opponent is down in the field and now being wheeled off um, and you see they have them stabilized not moving and uh, they're taking every precaution Trey Creighton. I know his mom, Josephine, and his dad, Clarence, you know, would be very concerned. His dad is a minister from Oceanside, California, and uh, they've come to see many of the games. I'm not sure whether they're here today, but they will be concerned. We'll try to get you an update as soon as we can. Gary Apple is on the sidelines, and as soon as he knows something, we will share it with you. So West Virginia takes over, first down and 10 from their own 34-yard line. Here's Amos Zaraway, and Zaraway met in the backfield, and he goes down at the 30-yard line. D.J. Dinkins with the hit. And defensively, for Pittsburgh, they are small up front. Kenny Pegram, though, he's their best, play, best player, a fifth-year senior. The linebackers, Ryan Gonzalez, true freshman, 15 tackles last week against Miami, and in the secondary, Crate out of the lineup, Brown out of the, rather, uh, Hank Pote out of the lineup. He's replaced by Chucky Brown. Second down and 12 from the 32, far side incomplete. Ball intended for David Saunders. And at the other cornerback position is uh, Cliff Allen. He's a junior, hasn't played that much, number 21. So Pittsburgh right now playing without both their starting cornerbacks. And certainly West Virginia will look to exploit that weakness with their fine receiver like Cliff, but it's Chiffon. Oh, Chiffon, okay. He's on the all-name team. <laughs> okay. All the football. Chiffon Allen. Brings up third down and 12 yards to go. From the 32-yard line for West Virginia, their first offensive series of the game. Bolger starting in the shotgun. And Bolger. The out pattern incomplete ball intended for Pat Green. And a bit defense, they come up strong. They force West Virginia to send it away. A little surprised to see Pat Green in the lineup. You know, he's been nursing that ankle, and uh, they weren't sure how much he would play. That time it was an out route. He just broke the ball, was poorly thrown. Bolger did not set up. He just threw with his arm and uh, incomplete. Last year, Pat Green had 12 catches for 200 yards against Pittsburgh in this same game, but he's playing with that tender ankle. That brings on Jay Taylor to punt. Standing at the 16-yard line. Tim Stein back deep. Let's it take a bounce. And it's recovered at the 36. A 31-yard punt, no return. So 13 minutes, 33 seconds remaining in the first quarter of play. Pit on offense after this. And welcome back to Three Rivers Stadium, first quarter. Pittsburgh with the football now. Let's go downstairs to Gary Apple. All right, guys, an update on Trey Creighton. He injured his neck. Now, he did have feeling in his arms and his legs, but less feeling in his arms. We are told that the numbness is starting to wear off. He's being taken to Presbyterian Hospital for an update, and we hope for the best there. Guys, back upstairs. Thanks, Gary. Sensational news. Great news on Trey Creighton. I'm sure his fiance and his mom and dad and everybody watching this game here in the stadium that's a little bit of a relief that there is feeling and hopefully it's not any serious injury. Matt Lytle, the starting quarterback for Pittsburgh. First down and 10 from the 38 for the Panthers. And on first 
down, they run the football. Brandon Williams, the freshman, carrying the load. Offensively, for Pitt, they're very young up front on the offensive line, but their receivers are good. Terry Murphy and Latif Grimm, two of the best in the Big East. Meanwhile, their offensive line, young, their two tackles, first year starters at Pitt. Second down and seven from the 41 yard line. And the pitch this time is Kevin Barlow. And Barlow trying to get outside, but he's wrapped up. Defensively for West Virginia, Kevin Lando, he's been having an outstanding season. Eight sacks on the year. The linebackers, Barrett Green, Gary Stills, they can go sideline to sideline. And in the secondary, Tompkins, Porter, along with Fisher and Davis. Third down and five from the 43. Lytle in trouble and he goes down. John Thornton with the sack and big john thornton playing with a hyper extended elbow that he suffered against rutgers didn't bother him there and this time lytle had no shot at all left-handed quarterback as you can see from the back side thornton in before he can set up he was looking for the quick out pattern. greg the ball back to punt from the 23 end over end kick antonio brown make it swoops fields it and gets up to the 35. a 32 yard punt tonight on cbs raggedy ann and andy come to life with your favorite ice skating stars plus team usa takes on the world in the hottest skating event on ice Stones, Raggedy Ann and Andy Holiday Show plus Ice Awards. Great family entertainment and what a great day here in Pittsburgh. Usually, some of the people told us that uh, they're accustomed to seeing snow on Thanksgiving Day, but the day after, 54 degrees. On first down, the ball is caught. This time, David Saunders cradling it, and he's close to a first down. Saunders just done a quick uh, out move against Chuck Brown, who's substituting at the cornerback positions, and you have to believe all day long, Bolger will take advantage of those quarterback mismatches, try to spread out the field and force the Pittsburgh defense to get out from in there, and once they do that, then it's Amos zero away with plenty of room to roam. Game eight on the play, second down and two from the 41. Zero away, stop, starts again continues to make people miss is lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage but what an exciting play just to get back to the line of scrimmage you know people say shades of barry sanders as we said in the open certainly there's only one barry sanders but you know in missouri has done it all in the big east and for west virginia take a look at that just the junior big question whether he stays or not first in rushing first in yards first in hundred yard games with 20 that's remarkable in his three-year career and he needs two touchdowns to tie for the all-time touchdown list in terms of rushing the football play action Bulger, and it's dropped david saunders david saunders with his last catch, has now caught at least one pass in his last 32 games. A little surprised to see a fine wide receiver like this, Gus, the senior, drop a ball. This ball is pretty well thrown. It's right there. He tried to catch it with his hands, which is what you're supposed to do, and just didn't pull it in. It happens sometimes. And it brings on Jay Taylor standing at the 27-yard line. Tim Stein back deep at the 23. Plenty of time to kick it for Taylor. Fair catch signal at the 29, and that's where Pittsburgh begins. 30-yard punt. 10 minutes and 11 seconds to go in the first quarter of play. No score. 10-11 remaining in the first quarter of play. No score from Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh. Uh, coming up on the college football today, AXA and Equitable Halftime Report. Tim Craig and Lou talk with Heisman frontrunner Ricky Williams of Texas. 
plus the scores and highlights from today's action. That's all coming up at halftime. Ricky Williams, huh? Breaking a record today. Tony Dorsett's record. Needed 62 yards to break the record. All-time rush leader in the NCAA. Play action liner. And it's incomplete. Had an open receiver, but looks like a little bit of miscommunication on that play. Chris Fiola, the intended receiver. Got the matchup they wanted on the linebacker, Pete Simeone, and uh, Fiola was actually open and had some running room had he pulled that ball in. Had a lot of running room along the sideline. Matt Lytle, a senior from Wyoming, Pennsylvania. He's been very frustrated this season, his coaches tell us. He's a fierce competitor, but at times he does force things. 16 touchdowns, 12 interceptions on the season. Second and 10 from the 29. Draw play. Pick up for Pitt. This time it's Kevin Barlow, a gain of nine. Caden with the tackle. This is a young Panther team, and actually it was Chris Edmonds on that last coverage for West Virginia, but they are a young team. Take a look at this graphic here. First away game, 34 players made that road trip. First game in Division 1A, what was that? Penn State, Gus? Exactly. 25 players made their first appearance. So they're young and they're thin. And, you know, Walt Harris was talking about we better play well early because we need to get some self-esteem and confidence to believe that we can actually win. So far, they've been playing well, and they stopped a powerful, explosive West Virginia offense on the first few drives. Here, they're on the move, and we have a measurement. Talking to Walt Harris the other day and telling, him, telling us that he only has 74 scholarships out of a possible 85 team has a lot of room to grow and they're a bit short of the first down and guess you might say why does he only have that well some of the players left of their own accord and he also some were run off because they just were not committed to the program Walt Harris has a long-term view of bringing Pittsburgh back to some of the glory days of Dorsett and Marino and and uh, some of the great players Freilich, who were part of that U Green, part of the Pittsburgh tradition. He wants to bring them back, and if you want to commit and you don't have the work ethic, then Walt Harris doesn't want you with the program. So third down and short for Pitt. From their own 38-yard line, Kevin Barlow is the deep man in the backfield. And they need about a foot. the pitch. Barlow with the first down and running room gets over the 45-yard line up to the 47-yard line, a gain of eight. Barlow with a nice run, but also a terrific lead block by Chris Snyder. Watch the lead blocker, number 32, Chris Snyder, right here. He gets out, makes a bump block, and then gets outside again right here to look for another player. Barlow takes it outside and picks up some good yardage. First down. Jerry Porter in on the tackle for the Mountaineers. And Barlow's the kind of kid they said that he has all the talent in the world, but sometimes he hurts himself with some of the things he does. Lytle again, this time passing, in trouble, scrambles out of the pocket with running room. Lytle gets inside the 45-yard line, down to the 43. Now, Gus Johnson, I know you like Matt Lytle. Who does he remind you of? Oh, he reminds me of a guy in Jacksonville, Mark Brunel. Gained eight on that play. This is his best ability. I mean, he's got real good speed, 4-7 or so, and his escapability is outstanding, and that's why you have to wonder about his future. It's only really his first full year of starting. Pete Gonzalez was there last year, but with that kind of running ability and a strong arm, who knows what the future might be. Chris Edmonds stopped him. And they use the fullback this time. No room up the middle. That's Edmonds again driving the pile backwards. And Chris Fiola with the carry. You talk about Matt Lytle. I mean, last two years ago, he was actually played some. And then last year, he lost his job to Pete Gonzalez, who is actually now the third quarterback 
Uh, but the Pittsburgh Steelers, Gonzalez had a spectacular year. I think it was kind of a wake-up call for Matt Lytle. I don't know if he committed himself enough, but he's back this year and hopes to have a big finish in this is his last game of his college career. Third down and three from the 45. Lytle scrambles out of the pocket again. Now steps up with running room. And he gets the first down. Matt Lytle needed to get to the 42, and he got to the 40. Barrett Green chases him down. He's very athletic, and quarterbacks who have that extra sense, that aura about it, where's the pressure coming from? He feels it. Now he knows he can't get outside, so he cuts back inside and then runs away from John Thornton to pick up the first down. So the Panthers driving. This is the sixth play of the drive that started on their own 29. Lionel going over to talk to the official. Seven minutes, 28 seconds to go here in the first quarter. No score. Lionel down the field, looking, and it's picked off. Jerry Porter picking it off. And we talked about that. Sometimes he forces things. He'll make the big play, and he'll make a bonehead play. That time, he just threw this ball up for grabs, and Porter was back on his safety, free safety position. And you can't throw a ball like this and expect to have it completed. Watch him right here. He just throws it up, lobs it up, and the center field to Jerry Porter has the best shot and makes the interception. Fifth interception of the season for Jerry Porter. And West Virginia gets the ball back at their own 14-yard line. Out of the eye. Zaraway on the pitch. Cuts it back, spins, still running. And there he goes. Amos Zaraway dropped down from behind at the 25-yard line. Chuck Brown with the tackle, but it's a gain of 12. How sweet he is, 12 yards. His cutback ability, his spinning ability, and then he has that little burst of speed. He does not have the blazing speed of, of a guy like uh, Barry Sanders, but watch this. He finds no room here, does a spin, so you can't get a piece of him, and then turns it back around, switches the ball the way you're supposed to. That allows him to keep his inside arm, his straight arm, open to grab a player's face mask from the looks of it at the end. <laughs> at 143 yards, rushing last week against Boston College. Balls your play action, going for the home run. Foreman caught it at the 30, dragged out at the 25. Sean Foreman. Two wide receivers can go downtown. The safeties for Pittsburgh are really run stoppers. This time Foreman gets behind Hornack, makes the catch for a huge game. Take a look at it again here. A little fake to Zero. We have to respect it. It held the safety Hornack, and then Foreman behind him for a huge game. First down for West Virginia, play action again. They set it up on the far side, and it's Anthony Green, and Green is dropped. Dinkins in on the play. DJ Dinkins, a former quarterback who last year, at the beginning of the season, was competing with Gonzalez for the starting quarterback job. He's played wide receiver on this team, but now he's found a home at safety. He certainly has, and he's a big safety, and he will come up and hit. He's 6'4", 225, and he doesn't really have that quarterback mentality. He has more of a defensive mentality, which he is now, free safety. He'll come up and hit you. Spoken like a true defensive back. He doesn't have the quarterback mentality. Ask Brett Favre about that. Second down and 11 from the 27-yard line. Zaraway breaks it back again, and he's tracked down from behind. Amos Zaraway stopped by Nick Cole. I mean, Amos Zeroway has done it all in his three years here at West Virginia. He just needs 56 yards coming into this game, Gus, to go over the 4,000-yard mark. I mean, he is just a in Big East all-time career leader in rushing. Amos Zeroway is a special back, as Don Nguyen says. From Long Island, and the big question for Amos, will he return for his senior season? 
Third down and eight from the 24. Bulger tossing it up, and it's incomplete. Contended for Anthony Bent. Harnack came over late, broke up the play. Also, Kareem Thompson there. This time, Bolger did not set himself. If you take a look at him right here, here's Bolger dropping back to Ben. Watch how he goes back. He doesn't set his feet, throws just with his arm. He's looking for the big target, 6'6", six, six, Anthony Beck. But a nice play by the free safe, strong safety, Seth Hornack to knock it away. Jay Taylor in to attempt a 42-yarder. Eight of 11 on the season, and it's up. And no good. So the Pitt Panthers hanging in there with 4.49 to go in the first quarter of play. Four forty-nine remaining in the first quarter, no score. Pitt with the football as they're playing at Three Rivers Stadium for the first time since 1982. They have a two and two overall record here. The Goodyear blimp Spirit of Akron floats above, providing aerial views today. One of six Goodyear blimps worldwide, the Spirit of Akron is proud to be a part of the 100th anniversary celebration of the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. What a beautiful shot of the Golden Triangle here on a magnificent sunny day in Pittsburgh. All right, give us the, uh, the rivers after this. I will after this. <laughs> First down and 10 from the 24. Lytle, far side incomplete, intended for R.J. English, the redshirt freshman walk-on from Waterford, Pennsylvania, who they're very high on. Bastine covering. That beautiful shot from the Goodyear blimp, of course, we all know it's the Allegheny <laughs> and Monongahela Rivers joining <laughs> to form the mighty Ohio. How many times did you practice that? I practiced that, and I practiced in this stadium any number of times in the early 70s with the Pittsburgh Steelers and uh, a great team. Fond memories of Three Rivers. Standing next to a man that played in that immaculate reception game. Draw play. And this time, Barlow. Nowhere to go at the 30, 25 yard line because Kyle Caden was there to wrap him up. Good defensive pursuit by West Virginia. West Virginia all this year has had problems stopping the run. It's only in the last four or five games that they've really been able to shut down the run and that's part of the reason is that Gary Stills was out for about four games and he is back and he is a force for uh, the West Virginia defense, the senior. Third down and nine from the 25 for Pittsburgh. Lytle setting up. And it's incomplete. Closest man to the football was Tompkins for West Virginia. And the Panthers have to punt it away. Lytle 0 for 4. And he's already thrown one interception. You know, Matt Lytle, when you talk to the coaches, you talk to Walt Harris, and he'll tell you, you know, he's got a lot of physical ability, but in terms of development as a quarterback, he's very young because he just hasn't played it. Alvin Swoop back deep. High spiraling punt. Swoop, fair catch signal at the 26. A 49-yard punt. Now let's take a look at the Sun America Virtual Playbook. A bread and butter play for West Virginia. The one back outside zone. at Zamus Zeroway at the tailback. He has to read the block of his left tackle who swings around and takes the linebacker. If he takes him outside like he does here, it's Zeroway up the gut with only a safety to beat. And that's not enough to stop Amos Zeroway. It's simple but effective. The one back outside zone for West Virginia. First down and 10 from the 27 for the Mountaineers. Here's the counter, zero way following his blocks, and he gets to the 30. And we talked about Amos Zeroway being from Long Island. He is not the greatest running back in the history of Long Island. Oh, I know. There was a pretty know. good running back that played there. I Did this running back then play at Syracuse? Yes, yes. Did he then play in the NFL? Yes, he played a couple of years ago. Wasn't he an outstanding lacrosse player? Uh, he's pretty good at that, too. Uh, was he one of the greatest backs ever? Maybe the best back ever to play in football, college, or, or pro? No question. Jim Brown. Jim Brown. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Second and seven from the 30. Play action. Bolger up top. And it's caught. Saunders banged out of bounds at midfield. But the catch stands. A gain of 
17 yards for David Saunders, the fifth-year senior out of Palatine, Illinois. You know, Pittsburgh at that time was just playing in a, a cover two, which is simply the cornerback is up. And uh, this ball is nicely thrown to Saunders because he yeah, gets by the cornerback Brown. And Dinkins, number one, is a little late getting over. He knocks him out of bounds, but he's a little late getting there. He threw it in that hole between the short corner and the deep safety. Nice throw by Mark Bolger. All-time leading receiver in West Virginia history. Out of the shotgun, Bolger, short roll, firing off the run, and it's a strike. Corey Ivy with the catch, and he tiptoes out of bounds. But it's a gain of 20 yards. And you know what made this work, Gus? It was that fake. If you take a look at the fake to Amos Zeraway, the guards are pulling, and then it's Bolger on the roll, like on the run, putting some zip on the ball, beautifully thrown to Corey Ivey. That's a nicely designed play. Watch the fake right here. Fake to Zeraway, the guards are pulling. See the lineman pulling in front of him there? That has the whole defense moving that direction. The last ball will go the other way for the completion. First down and 10 from the 33. Pittsburgh showing blitz. Now they back out of it. Bolger changing the play. Here comes the blitz. Bolger, quick release, and it's caught. Textbook play, Saunders with the catch out of bounds. About a yard and a half shy of the first down. He gained eight plus. Textbook play by the quarterback on the read and the wide receiver, but also nice pickup by the offensive line and the back zero way on the blitzing pitch. Um, Pittsburgh defense. I wasn't going to say Pittsburgh the Steelers. Steelers. Exactly. We're here at Three River Stadium. I can't help but think about the Steelers. But today is Panther Day at Three Rivers. I'm sure a lot of fans are thinking about the Steelers after yesterday's loss to Detroit and the way they lost that football game. Second down and short. Bulger, slant pattern, caught. Ivy, first down at the 10. Nicely executed slam pattern to Ivy just coming across the middle and uh, picks up the first down. Game 14. Bolger put three strip drop just to slant and this is a timing pattern and right there Dinkins misses as Ivy ducks underneath him to pick about another five or six yards up again. Just a little behind the receiver, and maybe that contributed to Dinkins missing because it made the receiver Ivy slow down. First down and 10 from the 12. Anthony Green in motion. Amos Zeraway running, and Zeraway picks up maybe two yards on the play. Ryan Gonzalez, the true freshman, with the tackle. Gus, you mentioned the Steelers yesterday and that whole thing in overtime with the coin toss. Boy, that was something else. Was it heads? Was it tails? The official said, Jerome, you call heads first. And uh, Detroit got the ball, and obviously they won that game. West Virginia, look at this. Total yards, 144. Pittsburgh only 30. But when you check the scoreboard, it doesn't matter. Second and nine from the 11. Seventh play of the drive. Bolger looking, backing up, and he dumps it. Wise play by the junior quarterback. Didn't see anything. He let it go. I was going to say he had awful good protection. He held that ball for a long, long time, and the penalty goes against West Virginia. Probably a holding call on the offensive line. But you're right, Gus. I mean, he did what you should do, and that's a mature quarterback. Bolger's played a couple of years now, and uh, he just threw that ball away the way you should. Holding on the offense, 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul, repeat second down. And talking about that West Virginia offensive line, they have four seniors on the offensive line. Three of them are fifth year seniors. A lot of experience up front for Don Neelan's team. He has a nice offensive team. This Don Neelan team coming into the season was picked to win the Big East. Now, that hasn't happened, but still, if they win today, they could be 8-3 and three and go to a major bowl, probably the Gator Bowl if they win this game. Second and a long 29. Play action for Bolger, setting up in the pocket, underneath, and it's incomplete. Sean Foreman dropped the football. And the pit defense right now, Doc, it looks like they're kind of bend but don't break. It's been the way, and this time he had enough time as you watch the receiver here, Sean Foreman, and he's on the replacement defensive back, Allen. 
the ball is sees weight and the ball comes it was definitely catchable it was dropped before Allen or anyone else hit him so he just dropped that ball so West Virginia faced with third and 29 from the 31 they're 0 for 3 on third down conversions so far they need to get to the two for first down zero away and he's cut down at the 20 DJ Dinkins nice tackle by Dinkins the former quarterback a gain of 11 yards a scary thing as you see a back like zero away with all that movement take a look at it here he will be at the end of this play one-on-one -on -one with DJ Dinkins in the open field see Dinkins breaks down and then just shoestring tackle to bring down Zero. Brings up Taylor, he's already missed one, attempting a 38-yarder. And he hit it. So with 105 remaining in the first quarter of play, West Virginia gets on the board. Five remaining in the first quarter of play, a 38-yard field goal by Jay Taylor gives West Virginia the lead, three to nothing. Gus Johnson and John Dockery with you. The backyard brawl, West Virginia and Pittsburgh. And a big game for West Virginia, not only because a win today really gives them a better opportunity of getting into a good bowl game, but also recruiting purposes on the line for Don Neelan's squad. Absolutely, and if you're going to stay as Don Neelan wants to be, two of the goals of his program is to be a top 25 team and also to be a bowl team. So this is a key for that. And talking about the bowl and, and trying to unravel it sometimes pretty tricky, but it looks like if they win this game, they would be Gator Bowl bound. And the scoring drive, nine plays, 53 yards, a 38-yard field goal. West Virginia, they recruit a lot out of this area, out of the western Pennsylvania area. And uh, to continue to beat up on Pittsburgh gives them the upper hand when they go into kids' homes to try to get them down to Morgantown. So they send it away from the 10-yard line. And the Panthers start from the 25, a 17-yard return. When you talk about the importance of uh, recruiting, you got a new quarterback coming into the game a little bit. Uh, I mean, I'm surprised in one way. In another way, when you see Matt O'Connor, the junior, coming in, you know, uh, there is uh, his statistics. One touchdown, one interception for the year. Matt Lytle, uh, obvious sits, and uh, you have to say Walt Harris is saying, hey, you know, he's not getting it done. Uh, let's try something different. I mean, the game is still close. And, you know, if we win this game, we'll get some momentum and some hope for the future. A quick hook, though, for the quarterback. Matt O'Connor, 8 of 25 on the season. And uh, he did start one game against Syracuse, but was replaced by Lytle at halftime. And they run the football, and this time... Just a little crease over the 25-yard line for Kevin Barlow. And they used two running backs in the backfield for this Pittsburgh team, Brandon Williams and Kevin Barlow. They get the bulk of the carries. They certainly do, but one of the things, guys, they haven't been able to is to really get a running game on track. So whether you're Matt Lytle or Matt O'Connor, you know, you don't have a great supporting cast up front, nor do you have a terrific run game. So it puts a lot of pressure on the quarterback. Walt Harris sitting as senior quarterback in his final game at Pittsburgh. Second and eight from the 29. O'Connor throws a strike and it's caught at the 35-yard line. Nice catch in traffic. And it looks like Murphy with the grab. Gary Tompkins with the hit. You know, as a quarter comes to an end, it'll be interesting to see whether Walt Harris, you know, gives Lytle another shot or whether he goes with Matt O'Connor as Pittsburgh trails by three here at Brewer River Stadium. Beginning of the second quarter, West Virginia leading Pittsburgh three to nothing. Gus Johnson along with John Dockery, and if you're Pittsburgh, this is where you want to be. Certainly where you want to be, keep it close and hope you can keep it close into the second half and make something happen. It's going to be interesting to see what he does at quarterback. Uh, Pittsburgh, is it Matt O'Connor or does he give Lytle a little chance to look at the game and bring him back in? It'll be interesting to see as we watch uh, second quarter unfolding here. O'Connor 
Under center right now for Pittsburgh. Barlow with the pitch running outside and he is tracked down but cuts it back inside and gets a first down at the 39, a gain of four. Nice piece of running by Kevin Barlow, the sophomore from Peabody High School here in Pittsburgh. Now let's go downstairs to Gary Apple. Okay, Gus, why the change in quarterbacks? Well, first of all, the word from the pit bench is they want to get some momentum going. And Lytle wasn't giving them that. And then good news from the hospital. The word on Trey Creighton is the feeling is coming back in his left arm. And so the doctors are encouraged. Guys, back upstairs. All right, Gary. Pittsburgh, first down and 10 from their own 39-yard line. Barlow, six carries, 28 yards. Play action. O'Connor rolling down the sidelines. Intercepted. Tompkins, what a play. And he spins out of trouble at the 38. Gary Tompkins, the junior from Miami, his third interception of the season, a one-hand grab. What a catch by Tompkins. There was an early flag on that play, and you have to believe, as we catch the official now, you would think that it was against. Yes, you would think it was against Pittsburgh. And this ball by O'Connor is just poorly thrown. Take a look at it right here. A little bit of a fake, and then he rolls out, and the ball is just thrown up. And what the play is, as you mentioned, Tompkins with the one-handing spinning catch pulls it in. A turnover for P Pittsburgh, West Virginia. West Virginia gets the ball back. And after the throw, take a look at here, Gary Stills and company. Let's kind of know that he's in the game. Tompkins, the leader in the secondary for West Virginia. He gives the Mountaineers terrific field position. First down and 10 at their own 38-yard line. And this time, Zeraway goes nowhere because Nick Cole is right there on him, along with Begram. You know, it was interesting to hear from Gary Apple about uh, Trey Creighton. Things are looking more positive by the moment, and that's great news. He left cornerback for Pittsburgh, who was hurt early in the game. And also the change of quarterback, looking for momentum. Uh, and I wonder if Matt O'Connor is going to be the guy. Lytle uh, has that improvisational ability to make things happen, but obviously Walt Harris believes he wasn't getting enough, uh, wasn't making enough happen for Pittsburgh offense. Second down and 11 from the 37. Quick strike, Saunders, stutter step, nowhere to go. What a nice defensive play. Kareem Thompson, the outside linebacker, wrapped him up and rode him out of bounds. Thompson was right there on this play. This was actually a lateral. Bolger throws it out. It's actually a lateral to Saunders. And you're right. Look at that play by Thompson right there. A loss for West Virginia. Kareem Thompson, a former defensive back, also played running back. Junior from Roanoke, Virginia. Loss of five. This pit team at one time this season, ninth in the country defensively. Currently, they're 27th. And they don't have a lot of talent on defense. Bulger. And it's incomplete. So the pit defense energized on the field. They have been playing great football against a high-octane offense so far, Doc. It certainly was. It's a nice play. And uh, this ball shouldn't have been thrown. It's actually double coverage out there with a the linebacker underneath the defensive back behind. And uh, fortunately for West Virginia, the ball was just thrown out of bounds, or it might have been intercepted. Jay Taylor, his third punt of the game. Stein back deep at the 29. Almost got there. Taylor barely getting it off, and Stein with the fair catch, a 41-yard punt. 13-29 remaining in the second quarter of play. Three to nothing. minutes and 29 seconds remaining in the second quarter. West Virginia, a little surprised now. They only lead it three to nothing. 
Time now for the Aflac trivia question. Who did Tony Dorsett pass to become the all-time career NCAA Division 1A rushing leader? We know Ricky Williams passed Tony Dorsett today against Texas A&M, but who did Tony pass? That is the question. Aflac trivia question. Can I give you a hint? Give me a hint. Come on. He was a Heisman Trophy winner. Heisman Trophy, Heisman Trophy winner. Yep. I'll, I'll keep that in mind. First down and 10, the pitch, and Barlow, no room on the right side. Stills in on the play for West Virginia, and Stills, what an interesting player. He's battled all kinds of injuries, but Don Neelan puts it best. He says, a healthy Gary Stills is to a defense what a seven-footer who can run the floor and block shots is to a basketball team. Wow, that's saying something. If you watch Gary Stills, you might want to even watch him on this next play. He's got the firstest, fastest two steps off the corner when he's rushing to pass it. Nobody's faster in college football. Second down and 12 from the 25. O'Connor over the middle incomplete. Ball intended for Terry Murphy, but he threw it behind him. Just as I say that, right Gary there. Stills drops back in pass coverage. He's just an all-around versatile athlete, Gary Stills is. Some people compare him to Lawrence Taylor. Now, that's a little bit of an exaggeration. There's only one Lawrence Taylor, but Gary Stills, when he was hurt earlier in the year, missed four games after fracturing a kneecap in Ohio State. That made a huge difference. West Virginia's defense just wasn't the same without him. Third down and 12 from the 25. Hit three of five on third down conversions today. Draw play, Barlow, spinning, wrapped up. And nowhere to go. They come up short. They needed to get to the 37 for a first down. Perlo Bastine with the tackle. Brings on Greg DeBolt to punt. And back deep for West Virginia. Number nine, Alvin Swoop. Bad punt. Got it away somehow. DeBolt. Great play by DeBolt to get it away. A bad snap. This is like trying to field a ball at shortstop. Watch the ball come bouncing back. DeBolt fumbles it, but then somehow gets it off. He did a great job. CBS Sports coverage of NASDAQ Amex College Football will continue after this message and a word from your local station. The address is CBS. Welcome home. New Year, changing leaves can only mean one thing. Season. Your service of West Virginia is your Linux dealer. It's also home heating season. I have the ditch, the big street, the recliner. We have the Linux heat pump, furnace, and fireplace. Yep, this season this is the best seat in the house, baby. Thanks to air service of West Virginia, it's also the warmest. Linux, one less thing to worry about. West Virginia's competition is tough, at times even brutal. But listen, Mountaineer fans, one way to beat them is with the club, the Mountaineers United Club. I'm Coach Don Nealon, and this is a great way to support WBU athletic scholarships while enjoying free Mountaineer checks, a no annual fee Mountaineer credit card, and more. Please join today at your nearest United office. Unless, of course, you're a Hokie. John Parker skipped this ball back to Greg DeBolt. He did a great job to come up with it. 
And he gets off a 19-yard kick. You wouldn't say the greatest kick, but that could have easily been nine, minus 19 or else blocked and taken in for a touchdown. So a terrific play by the punter, Greg DeBolt, to save a disaster for Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh defense being tested once again. This time West Virginia has the football at the Pittsburgh 47-yard line. Down play action, Bolger over the middle, Saunders with the catch, breaking tackles and gets inside the 25 to the 24. And that play action fake held the linebacker, so it's simply one on one with Brown on Saunders, and that's a pretty tough assignment. The ball is well thrown, and then Saunders after the catch is able to run for extra yardage. You can't do that, you guys. You can't put your cornerbacks both up cornerbacks playing today. Can't put them one-on-one -on, -one on this quality wide receiver and expect to get the coverage. Chuck Brown with the saving tackle. First and 10 from the 24. Bolger passing again. Looking in the end zone. Touchdown. Corey Ivey. 24 yards. Again, the safety's too late. It's one-on-one -on -one with the corner. Ivy just does the post pattern. Can't expect the corner to be there. He needs, he's looking for help from the safety, but you see it right there. Seth Hornack, too late getting over. Touchdown, West Virginia. So Corey Ivy, his fourth touchdown of the season, brings on Jay Taylor, who missed two extra points last, seat, last week, rather. And this one is good. Corey Ivey, three catches, 57 yards, and the old coach is shaking hands. Ten to nothing, a 24-yard touchdown from Mark Bolger to Corey Ivey, and the West Virginia Mountaineers have finally got six points on the board, make it seven with the extra point. Now the answer to the Aflac trivia question, who did Tony Dorsett pass to become the all-time career NCAA Division I-A rushing leader is... Is... Griffin. Double Heisman Trophy winner, Archie Griffin. Ohio State 72 to 75, and someone broke Tony's record as well. Ricky Williams. Texas A, Texas rather, beating Texas A&M today. Ricky Williams, the all-time leading rusher in Division 1A history passing. Tony Dorsett, Tony Dorsett and Earl Campbell on the sidelines at that game. And Pittsburgh taking a knee, Shafon Allen in the end zone. They start from the 20-yard line. And people talk about Ricky Williams and they say, there's a scorer, by the way, Texas 26-24 over Texas A&M. And check that, Gus, for Ricky Williams, 259 yards. Man goes over 2,000 yards for the season. Averages almost six yards a carry. And, you know, people are saying, who is he like? You know, Earl Campbell, maybe, but Earl was, I think, a little bigger, you know, um, than he was. Matt Lyder back in the game at quarterback. First down and 10 from the 20. He replaces Matt O'Connor, who replaced him. Lytle passing on first down, and he throws a missile. Terry Murphy with the catch, and Murphy tiptoes out of bounds at the 43-yard line, a gain of 38. Sometimes, as a quarterback, a coach will take a quarterback out so that he can see the field and get a little perspective. Lytle's been sitting for a while. This time he goes to Terry Murphy, perhaps the best wide receiver on the Pittsburgh team. Over the middle, ball well thrown, and then Murphy after the catch, he can run. Of course, last year, Murphy caught that touchdown in triple overtime as Pittsburgh beat West Virginia last year. Good protection as well. First completion of the day for Lytle. He's one of five. Throwing again on first down, steps up, wants to run and goes down. He is swarmed under. Lytle, but there is, I believe, a flag on the play. Yes, at the 33. And Stills was in on the play. 
Gary Stills is a guy who is just all over the field. We'll get this call now. It looks like it's against West Virginia, a personal foul. But Stills is a guy who's 24 years old and really is trying to show scouts. After the play was over, on the defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. They didn't say who the penalty was on, but we're talking about Stills. He wants to show the scouts that he is indeed a number one pick in the NFL draft. Watch at the end of the play here. And that's the penalty they call. I don't think it was on Stills. I think it was actually, it was either just before that, but Stills really quick on defense everywhere. First down and 10 for Pitt at the West Virginia 27. Golden opportunity for them. They run the option. Lytle tucks it, and he is dragged down. John Thornton chased him down the line of scrimmage and hauled him in. And you know, running the option, Walt Harris put it in there to use the skills of his quarterback, but also to keep the defenses off balance by having that in your repertoire. So with 10 minutes and 23 seconds remaining in the second quarter, West Virginia leading it 10 to nothing. Lytle faced with second down and 10 from the 27. The option goes back to pass in the end zone. Incomplete. Intended for Latif Grimm, but good coverage on the play by the Mountaineers. Charles, Charles Fisher. Fisher. Exactly, Gus. And this time they try to go to their home run hitter, Latif Grimm. He was out last week with a concussion. Here he's down in the end zone. And Grimm, there was a, actually a yell from the crowd, and they were hoping that there'd be a defensive interference call on Charles Fisher, number four. Both players pushing and shoving, no call. Incomplete. Charles Fisher, a senior from Aliquippa. Third down and 10 from the 27. They need to get to the 17 for a first down. Ball knocked away. Chris Edmonds got a hand on it. Edmonds, sophomore from Pittsburgh, played at Woodland Hills High School, where he was discovered by his high school football coach in gym class. And Edmonds showed some athletic ability that time. He got out from his linebacker position to tip that ball. It was intended for Latif Grimm, sophomore transfer from junior college and a really fine player for Pittsburgh. Breaks on Nick Lotz in to attempt a 44-yard field goal. Pittsburgh, they've used three different kickers on the season. Big one for him. He missed it. Hooked it to the left. 9.55 remaining in the second quarter. West Virginia up 10 nothing. Nine minutes and 55 seconds remaining in the second quarter. West Virginia leading it 10 to nothing with the football. One of America's most enduring corporate symbols, the Goodyear blimp flies overhead for nearly 75 years. Millions of children and adults have watched the Goodyear blimp hovering over special events. Today, it's the spirit of Akron carrying on that proud tradition. I think this is only my second blimp game. That's kind of an accomplishment for an announcer when you get a blimp game. I'm very excited to have Goodyear here with us. Oh, yes, exactly, a blimp game. <laughs> Antonio Brown on the shovel pass, around the corner and out of bounds at the 40-yard line. A 13-yard gain for the freshman out of Miami, Florida. 19 players on this roster from Miami for West Virginia and the quarterback comparison. You see Bolger, uh, 10 of 16, 106, 73 yards, one touchdown. Lytle not my, having much of a day, one of seven, 38 yards. It's a supporting cast, Gus, as much as anything else. Obviously, West Virginia, a superior team, more time. Four receiver package in for West Virginia. This is when they like to spread you out. And they give it to Zeroway. Up the middle, no room for Amos.
Davis Zaraway. That's Davis because Damon Gibson was there to chop him down. And you put a, put your finger on a good point. They Julian spread you Griffin out, the and then they give it to their diminutive running back with all of that running ability in the hopes that he'll find some space to move around. Total yards, West Virginia dominating 210 to 81. Eight and three on the play. But Second Pitt down still down. in good shape, trailing only 10 to nothing. Second and eight from the 43. Bulger play action sets up deep in the pocket and throws a BB. Ball caught at the 45-yard line of Pitt by Corey Ivey. Kareem Thompson with the tackle, a gain of 11. And they really like, Doc, the receivers that they have that will follow Foreman and Saunders, Ivy, Green, as well as Antonio Brown. They are loaded at the wide receiver position, and uh, he's just getting time as well. The quarterback, Bolger, from that veteran offensive line, it's just like playing pitch and catch in the backyard when you have that much time. Ivy already with a 24-yard touchdown, four catches, 68 yards, first and 10 from the 45. Bolger rolling, throwing, caught, Ivy again, written out of bounds at the 27. But Ivy is having a day. That time, Hornack pushed him out of bounds, but he picked up another big chunk, 17 yards. If you watch this play, you'll see a little uh, play action as uh, Bolger fakes the ball to Zeroway, and you see the line pulling. Then he just rolls out, pulls the defense, and you're right, Ivy is having a day. Good targets, they're all big targets. Ivy 6-2. Watch the fake to Zeroway. You must respect that when you have a back like Zeroway, and that opens it up on the other side. Ivy from Boca Raton, Florida, junior college transfer. Ball just setting up again. This time, it's incomplete. Shafon Allen, the backup quarterback who was forced to start today because of the injuries to Hank Poteet and Trey Creighton. Chuck Brown is the other starter. He was there defensively. That was a good play by Allen. There was actually some bumping. The wide receivers for West Virginia are very physical. If you look at them, they're all about 6'2", about 200 pounds, 205 pounds there. They're physical guys who will go up and get the ball and not afraid to catch it over the middle. Second down and 10 from the Pittsburgh 27 for the Mountaineers. Zeroway looking for a hole at the line of scrimmage and he pushes the pile forward, gets to the 22. They need to get to the 17 for first down. Ryan Gonzalez, the middle linebacker with the tackle. Who will win the Heisman Trophy? Get a complete breakdown of the top contenders in the Heisman Watch at CBSSportsLine.com and on America, American Online at keyword CBS Sports Line. Who do you like in the Heisman? We'll talk about it after this play. Well, I, I don't think there's a question. Okay. Third down and five from the 22. Bulger looking in the end zone. Touchdown. Saunders, 22 yards. Gus, you mentioned it, the injury to Creighton, that cornerback forces Chuck Brown into that. The ball is so nicely thrown, it's thrown out and away. He's trying, Brown is trying to play up tight. The ball is thrown out and away. Saunders, too much speed, gets by Brown, and then a perfectly thrown ball. Touchdown, West Virginia. David Saunders, sixth touchdown of the season, and the extra point is good. Seven minutes, 49 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Mountaineers starting to open it up a bit here in Pittsburgh. Seven minutes and 49 seconds remaining in the second quarter. West Virginia leading it 17 to nothing as they begin to open things up here in Pittsburgh. Coming up on the college football today, AXA and Equitable Halftime Report. Tim, Craig, and Lou will talk with Heisman frontrunner Ricky Williams of Texas plus scores and highlights from today's action. That's all coming up at halftime. Talking about the front runner, I mean, there are some other guys who've had some decent years. You know, Tim Couch, Ron Dane, I mean, there are some guys out there. But it certainly does look like Ricky Williams who broke Tony Dorsett's record today at the halftime. Huh? Okay, I'd like to hear what he has to say. So West Virginia starting to put points on the board. They began with a 38-yard field goal by Taylor in the first quarter. But then in the second quarter, 
a 27-yard touchdown from Bolger to Ivy, followed by a 22-yard touchdown from Bolger to San Saunders, and they lead it 17 to nothing. Pittsburgh receiving Shafon Allen from the 10. Allen with running room, he gets outside. One man to beat. And he is hauled down at the 40, and a penalty. Face mask is the call. But what a run by Allen. A return of 48 yards. Charles Fisher with the face masking penalty. And that's going to be the big one. And watch this run. This is a fabulous run by Allen, and, and that's what Pittsburgh needed. Some kind of a spark just weaves his way through. And if this were not a defensive back right there, if it weren't a defensive back, Fisher, he might have been gone all the way. And Fisher, he got the face mask. Take a look at it right here. He does get the face mask, the de desperation thing. And you wonder if he didn't get the des face mask, whether he would have been gone. It's definitely a 15-yard flagrant face mask that probably saved a touchdown. So the Panthers with the football at the West Virginia 26. And a first down. That's just what Pittsburgh needed to ignite some, so get some life here. They're down 17 nothing. They need a quick touchdown. Matt Lytle has to get them into the end zone. And the penalty yards. First down and 10 from the 26. Lytle looking and running. He does it well and he snakes down at the 15, make it the 16 yard line. Dropped the ball but got it back. A gain of nine. That's where Lytle hurts you so much. You talk to the defensive coaches and players from West Virginia, and they'll tell you, he'll drive you nuts. He can't find anybody, so what does he do? He takes off and has a good sense, and then he dives forward. Very close to the first down, so close, Gus, that they're going to measure. They need to get to the 16 for a first down, and the ball is spotted right outside the 16. And they got it by a nose. So Pittsburgh, they've been deadly in the red zone this season. They've scored on 26 of 32 chances inside the red zone. 21 touchdowns and five field goals. Okay. So let's see here. Down 17 to nothing. First and 10 from the 16. Lionel. Near side caught. Latif Graham out of bounds, right in front of Fisher, and they go at it. A gain of seven. Latif Graham, he's got two good receivers. He's got Terry Murphy, and he's got number 83. Latif Graham against Fisher, just a quick out pattern. Fisher with the cushion. Latif Graham actually doesn't go out of bounds. Most receivers would just go out of bounds there, but he turns it back upfield to try to get some extra yards. Graham leads the Big East in receiving yards per game, averaging like 94 yards per game. He's from Los Angeles, California. Junior college transfer, second down and three from the nine yard line. Barlow breaks it outside, spins, oh wow! when he played at Peabody High School in Pittsburgh. Been in and out of the Walt Harris doghouse this season, but I tell you, he jumped out of it right there. Great run. All of that set up by the huge kickoff return by Shafon Allen. And then right here, watch Barlow. Nice cuts, nice movement for 
causes some people to miss. Very nifty run. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. 7-0-3 remaining in the second quarter of play. Panthers on the board. They trail 17-7. Nine-yard touchdown run by Kevin Barlow, and the Panthers back in this game. They trail it 17-7. And a scoring drive, three plays, 26 yards, set up by the big kickoff return by Shafon Allen, 48 yards. The face-masking penalty tacked on at the end of that. And then as the Pittsburgh was just ignited, sometimes you just need that spark to light the fire. Kevin Barlow with a nice nine yard run after that. And what I like about Kevin Barlow is when uh, Coach Walt Harris told us he can do things that you just can't coach. He has the talent, but as you mentioned, he hasn't always had the motivation or the work ethic. Short kick. And Mark. Corman gets out of bounds. Now let's go downstairs to Gary Apple. Okay, Gus, we just got some very encouraging news surrounding Trey Creighton, who was uh, injured on the opening play of the game. Word from the hospital is that x-rays were negative. He has full feeling back in his arms and his legs, and there is a chance that he will come back to the stadium. So that is certainly a huge sigh of relief for everybody. Guys? All right, Gary, great work. Good news for everybody in this stadium because that was a scary moment as we began this football game. He was well cared for. He went to Presbyterian Hospital and that's great news for the senior left cornerback for Pittsburgh. First and 10 from the 37. Zeraway gaping hole. Amos Zeraway up to midfield. And a gain of 13 yards tackled by Gonzalez. But prior to that run, Kevin Barlow was outrushing Zeraway 38-34. I don't think that will continue. Sooner or later, Zeroway is going to make something happen. He's just got that good burst, such great cutting ability, and as we mentioned earlier, he needed just 56 yards to go over the 4,000 mark for his three-year career here at West Virginia. First down and 10 from the 50. Brown, the motion man. The reverse, Brown. Look at him run, first down. Inside the 40, and what a burst of speed. Runs a 10-6 in the 100 meters. He was a track man in high school down in Miami, and he picked up 12. Dinkins, the injured player, and he's grabbing his left knee. And that would be devastating. They've already lost two starting cornerbacks. He's their starting safety. Here's number one right here that we're talking about, Dinkins. He comes in to make the tackle. It's his legs caught up. You see his left knee got caught under him. The, the runner came back on him, and, and that looks, this is what's happened. See him come in right here, and that's his left knee is the problem. Gets caught underneath him, and he's one of those big guys, 6'4", 225. You know, he's gangly for his safety, and he's hobbling off the field right now, but look at that. He's starting to, to move a little better. Off. Hopefully he can walk it off and get back in the game. You know, being a former quarterback, T.J. Dinkins has some age in his secondary because he has a sense of what the offense is looking to do. So often a quarterback will be an outstanding defensive back, especially the safety positions, because they read so well and they understand the game so well. He's replaced by a freshman, Lee Lightner, out of Alvin, Texas, number 28. Bolger to the sidelines, and it is caught. Saunders once again bobbling the football. He dropped one already. And usually a sure-handed receiver as he gives you a big smile after that play. Chuck Brown with the tackle. And Chuck Brown in the corners. Allen and Brown are giving the receivers Foreman, Saunders, Ivy plenty of cushion because they've been burned. And they know the pass rush isn't getting there, so you can't play too tight or you'll get burned again. That's why those throws in front of the cornerbacks are working so well for West Virginia. Saunders already, six catches, 85 yards. He's in motion. Three receivers in the game. Bolger, bootleg, looking in the end zone. Incomplete. Two West 
Virginia receivers right there, Saunders and Foreman. And Bulger throws it out of the end zone. You know, he was trying to also look for his tight end who was held up, but he had Corey Ivey in the flat. But you know what? He wanted to go for the bomb, so he went downfield to Foreman and Saunders. Take a look at it right here. All right? All right, it's a little play action fake. Now, if you look coming across the field, he actually has a receiver, oh, Ivy open, but decides to go downtown for the seven, doesn't work. Third down and three from the 31. West Virginia, one for six on third down conversion. And Zaraway spins and gets the first down. That's what makes him such a great back. He can make you miss, and the first guy rarely brings him down. A gain of seven. How many times have you seen the great backs do that? The Emmett Smiths, the Barry Sanders, they appear to be stopped in the backfield. The way Amos Zeroway is right there, he spins, bounces off like a pinball, and then picks up the first down. Damon Gibson kicking himself right now because he had it. But couldn't hold on. First down and ten from the 24-yard line of Pittsburgh for the Mountaineers. Bulger, quick strike, incomplete. Intended for the freshman, Antonio Brown. You know, Zeroway, you had a good point before, Gus, when you're talking about Zeroway, would he come back? He's been non-committal about coming back. You see his rushing numbers there today, 12 for 54 yards, getting close to that 4,000-yard mark for a career. But your point, I think, was well taken, that Zeroway, you know, he'll have a pro career. He will definitely play on Sundays. But to come back and then mind coming back for him. Yeah, I, I thought it, that if you have a chance to win the Heisman Trophy, you come back and, and try to go after that trophy. Zara Way again. And a lot of contact down at the 20-yard line. Chuck Brown with the hit. But Your point is well taken about Zara Way. I mean, he was a also Heisman a big gamble. A big gamble, sure. If you get hurt or something happens to you, you know, I mean, anything could happen, especially when you have hits like this in the game. You take a listen to this. This old. Very physical. Zeroway has played with a deep thigh bruise this season. He's got 59 yards on 13 carries. Third down and five. Ivy the motion man. Bulger setting up. Over the middle. Cut. Anthony back. And he gets inside. of the season for the junior tight end from Drexel Hill, Pennsylvania. And if you take a look at this, it's, just, it's a quick, uh, you forget about the tight end. He's right over here, take a look. And then he just slips out after he does a little block and then slips out right over the middle. No one's there. They forgot all about him with all the wide receivers on the outside. Such good talent. Beck just slips, slips out to make the catch, picks up the first down. Marlon Young saved the touchdown for Pittsburgh. First down, goal to go from the four. Play action, Bulger locks it up. What touch and a little reward for the tight end who made a big catch on that drive on the play before Bulger says, hey, back to Anthony, Tony, I'm going to reward you. Here's a little flip into the end zone. Make sure you're catching your 6'6". Should be no problem. He does. And the extra point is good. So Mark Bulger, he's thrown three touchdown passes. That one to his big tight end, Anthony Beck. His fourth touchdown reception of the season. And just a little play action fake, and then lobs it to the outside. The defensive back bought it. And, uh, you know, that was Tompkins. He's supposed to be watching Beck, but he bought the fake. And uh, Beck got behind him for the touchdown. Beck came to West Virginia as a wide receiver in today's NASDAQ. Amex Scholar Athlete of the Game is Anthony Beck to West Virginia. NASDAQ, Amex's commitment to the investment in our future is shown today by the donation of $1,000 to West Virginia's 
general scholarship funds. And not only is it, he a good student, but he's also a tight end with some pretty nice hands. And the Durag, <laughs> Deion Sanders style. And a happy man, touchdown, his fourth of the year. The scoring drive, nine plays, 63 yards, moved around, zero away on the ground, hitting some of the wide receivers, then coming back to the forgotten man at tight end, Anthony Beck. We talked to Coach Neal, and he was really key on some of the things that Beck has been doing this season, and he's only a junior, and Coach Nealon feels that next year he's really going to have a breakout year. And he said he was sort of a made man. Big smile came to Don Nealon's face when he talked about his tight end, saying he's worked so hard, he's built himself up. He was a relatively skinny wide receiver when he got here. Now he's a big tight end who can block and also catch. Had another good tight end in West Virginia a couple of years ago. Love it for now. Now he's in the NFL with the New England Patriots. This one going out of bounds. Now don't forget, tomorrow, rather Sunday, the NFL on CBS, Jacksonville, Cincinnati, Indianapolis, Baltimore, or Doug Flutie and the Buffalo Bills against New England. Flutie going back to New England, Tennessee, and Seattle. I love that Buffalo versus New England question. NFL today, you know that Jim Nance and company have to be talking about Bledsoe. A finger injury, will he play? I mean, the Flutie man, the Magic Flutie going back to New England. Great game. A lot of implications there in that AFC East lock chain. Lytle. And on first down, the catch is made. This time, Terry Murphy in front of Perlo Bastine. Bastine on the stop for the Mountaineers. You know, Pittsburgh was able to get a little life in that last drive and get a touchdown from uh, Kevin Barlow. Boy, you know, Matt Lytle has to do it again. It was 24 to 7. You know, we're getting close to the half. He has to try to keep it going, keeping some momentum so these guys will believe in themselves. They're young, they're inexperienced. They have to get someone to lead them. Second down and five yards to go from the 40. Lytle back to pass out of the backfield. It's Barlow changing directions, and Barlow swung down by Chris Edmonds. Chris Edmonds making the tackle. Barlow really good out of the backfield receiving the football, but the kid Edmonds in the middle, he's a very athletic linebacker. 6'3", 230, and can run. So third down and passing yards. Lytle out of the backfield and Barlow drops it. Edmonds bearing down on him and he just plain dropped the football. Tried the same play, it worked before. They figured they'd try it again. Barlow, this ball seemed to be catchable but you mentioned it. It's a little out there on his fingertips, and you see his head movement there. He knew the linebacker was coming, Edmonds, and he said, uh-oh, you know, maybe I'm not going to catch this one. Maybe I'm not going to make the first down. The ball blocked. Picked up. Tompkins. Touchdown. They almost had one blocked earlier. The snap is a little bit low. Right up the middle, no one blocks. And then it's just a bounce. Case Tompkins. Schiller blocked the punt. Tompkins picked it up, ran 22 yards for the score. And now West Virginia up with the extra point. 31 to 7. Nice play by K.C. Schiller, breaking through and blocking the punt. It's a little bit low this, a second low snap, and as you mentioned, breaking through there, no one blocked him, and then the bounce was very kind to Tompkins after the play. It just bounced up into his hands, and he took it for the touchdown. Problems on special teams for Pittsburgh. 
and now they've dug a hole for themselves down 31 to 7 with a minute and 54 seconds remaining in the first half. You may have, uh, you saw Greg DeBolt on the sidelines there, the punter for Pittsburgh, and he made a nice play before and a real bad snap to get it off and get a 19-yard punt. That time, he had to go down. By the time he looked back up, it was too late. It was blocked. West Virginia gets the touchdown. You know, the wheels are coming off the wagon for Pittsburgh. Last year, they had that 6-5 and five season, that miracle triple overtime win at Morgantown against West Virginia. It's a long way to come back, 31-7, to seven against a very good team. So Walt Harris, he told us that yes, they're inexperienced and they don't have as much talent as they need, but they fought every game this season despite losing to teams they normally beat like Temple and Rutgers. West Virginia sending it away. Jafon Allen from the one. Allen straight ahead up to the 25. Make it the 27. A return of 26 yards. The last time these two teams played, a lot closer. We flash back. Don Nealon and his West Virginia team. Three overtimes this game goes into. 35-35 after regulation. Third overtime. Jay Taylor kicked the career best 52-yard field goal. But Pitt wins on Pete Gonzalez's touchdown pass to Terry Murphy. Lighter, far side, caught, grim, and he's wrapped up close to a first down. Charles Fisher there once again. Gus, you're talking about last year and what a year it was in Walt Harris's first year. It went six and five and went to the Liberty Bowl. High expectations, probably unrealistic as he was trying to rebuild. So in a way, the bar got raised a little higher in terms of anticipation last year with that 6-5 and five record. This year they're 2-8, and eight, and uh, certainly this will be a disastrous season. They're way behind here, so it could easily be 2-9. and nine. Lytle throwing again. Flushed out of the pocket, throws on the run, incomplete. Fiola, the intended receiver, but he was buried by Barrett Green. And Barrett Green, an interesting story. His father, Joe, played for Don Nealon at Bowling Green. And he reminds a lot of the coaches at West Virginia of Bernard Russ, who is now playing with New England. You know, Barrett Green is a great story. You talk to Don Nealon, he'll tell you that his father, Joe, was the best player he had ever had at Bowling Green. And if you things don't come full circle, Joe Green was asked to move from strong safety to nose tackle 30 years ago at Bowling Green. And Barrett Green went from strong safety to linebacker here for Nealon this year. Lytle down the field, and it's dropped. Terry Murphy. Call that a case of alligator arms. As he dropped the ball, Lytle put it on the money. You know, Lytle did throw that ball well, and Ter Terry Murphy, senior wide receiver, in between the two defenders. The ball thrown behind him, but certainly catchable as he spun around, wasn't able to hold on. Third down and 10 from the 38 for Pittsburgh, trailing it 31 to 7. Lytle rolling with running room. And incomplete. Latif Grimm couldn't hold on. If you take a look at Latif Grimm, the ball is on the sidelines. He goes up, he tries to get the one foot in, but he can't hold on to the ball, incomplete. Greg DeBolt back on the front stand, he got the 25. Remember last time, he was back there, his punt was blocked, good snap, and he got it off, low wobbly kick, swoop, lets it bounce, and gets away from it. With a minute and one second remaining, 34-yard punt. Now tomorrow, it's a college football doubleheader here on CBS Sports. First, Joe Hamilton.
Hamilton and the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets face two-way threat Champ Bailey and the Georgia Bulldogs. Then the Big East title is at stake when Edger and James and the Hurricanes hit on Donovan McNabb and the Orangemen of Syracuse. Stay on top of all the goings-on with Tim Brando, Craig James, and Lou Holtz on college football today. Mm, Big East title at stake, huh? Miami Syracuse, terrific game. First down and 10 for West Virginia from their own 27. Bolger out of the shotgun. Zaraway skips through the hole. Gary Stills with the tackle. An interesting story about Mark Bolger. We told you how he played at Central Catholic here in Pittsburgh. His father, Jim, was a backup quarterback at Notre Dame behind Joe Theismann. And the irony in all this is he wasn't even recruited by this Pittsburgh team. You imagine what Pittsburgh program is thinking that this guy, Mark Bolger, comes back to play so well. He's only about 70, 80 miles down the road in Morgantown. Bolger in trouble, scrambling, and is dropped at the 15. Mark Bolger, under a lot of pressure, went down the first sack of the day by the Pitt Panthers. Looks like Pete Simonian may have gotten him. And that is the end of the first half. Mark Bolger, 17 of 26, 265 yards and three touchdowns. So West Virginia and Don Neelan told us when we talked to him earlier this week that this game is important because last year Virginia went seven and four, didn't get into a bowl game, so eight wins put you in a better position. Now let's go downstairs to Gary Allen. Okay, Gus, with Coach Nealon, they cut it to 17-7, then the Bolger touchdown and the block punt really changed the game. And the block punt was a big play for us. Uh, that, that's, that's about our fifth or sixth one this year. We're having a lot of fun trying that. But uh, this, this team's playing really good defense. We've got to keep playing hard. All right, Coach, thanks very much. Thank you. All right, that's the end of the first half of play with the score. West Virginia leading it 31-7. to Stay tuned. Timmy Brando, Greg James, and Lou Holtz bring you up to date on all the scores and highlights. Welcome back to Pittsburgh where we're ready to begin the second half of play. Gus Johnson along with John Dockery in the big story in the first half. Mr. Bolger coming back home to play in front of the home friends and family, and boy, he's putting on a show. 268 yards passing, three touchdowns. We talked about the balanced offense of West Virginia with the running game, Zeroway. Zeroway's doing fine. He's got about 67 yards rushing. But it's really been Bolger in the passing game that is dominant, plus the block kick. I mean, West Virginia blocks a kick, takes it in for a touchdown. So they're just dominating Pittsburgh here. There's Mark Bolger. Three touchdowns in the first half of play. Let's see what he does in the second half, and he's hit six different receivers. So Shafan Allen standing at the one-yard line, ready to return the football for Pittsburgh. Important for them to get off to a good start at the beginning of this third quarter. Allen from the four. Straight ahead with running room up to the 30-yard line. Make it the 29-yard line, a 25-yard return. And the Sun America first half statistics. I think we just talked about it a little bit. It's really been Bolger has been the guy. And look, no turnovers right here for West Virginia. The passing yards dominant right here. Total yards, again, total yards 321. So it's been all West Virginia, including that block kick, a punt, which they return for a touchdown. Pittsburgh starting first down and 10 from their own 29-yard line. The pitch, Barlow. Slides ahead over the 30 up to the 33 yard line. Get back out there before famous Sam Slaves. Kevin Landolt with the tackle for the Mountaineers. Landolt making the tackle for the Mountaineers. So in the first half of play, Kevin Barlow, nine carries, 40 yards, including the nine yard touchdown run. 
one of the bright spots for this Pittsburgh team. Second and six from the 33. They need to get close to the 40 for first down. And it's incomplete. Ball intended for Latif Grimm, underthrown by Matt Lytle. What you're looking at is a superior football team just dominating an inferior football team. The talent level on West Virginia, right from the offensive and defensive lines, right through the skill positions, is just a, such a huge discrepancy between the two. You know, as Walt Harris in his second year tries to rebuild Pittsburgh, uh, certainly Don Nealon around for 19 years, has the stability at West Virginia and just keeps it rolling. Third down, six yards to go. They need to get to the 39 and a half for first down. Lytle wants to run, and he is tackled in the backfield. That stills Gary Stills, his eighth sack of the season, second of the day for the Mountaineers. Gary Stills, such a disappointing year early when he was hurt in that Ohio State game. He is the best, one of the best edge pass rushers in the game. His first few steps on the outside we mentioned. That time he comes to the outside and his athletic ability and mobility comes back to get the sack. And a whistle and flag before the play got off. Gary Stills, he says his mom Rosetta calls him every day to keep him motivated, also to keep him focused on school and football. Movement on the offensive line against Pittsburgh. First penalty of the game for the Panthers. You're talking about Gary Stills. He's also, he's 24 years old. You know, he's a man on a mission. Started off slowly, as I mentioned. Just wants to prove that he deserves to go in, the, in that first round of the NFL draft. Greg DeBolt from the nine. Pressure, got it away. Low, wobbly kick. And the ball is recovered at the 44-yard line, a 24-yard punt. So Don Nealon, he told us that one of the keys for him this season is to, in a sense, gain revenge over some teams that he lost to last year. Yeah, he lost to those teams last year. You see the scores, Boston College, Syracuse, and Pittsburgh. This year he came back and beat Boston College last week. Syracuse was really the high point of the season, he said, when they, when they beat them 35-28. And right now they're on their way to knocking off Pittsburgh, so he will have achieved that goal. 19 years at West Virginia. He's had many opportunities to coach other places. And as a matter of fact, he's had 10 opportunities to coach at other schools. But decided to stay at West Virginia. Zeroway chopped down in the backfield by Kareem Thompson. Don Nealon, the winningest coach in West Virginia history. He's also one of the winningest active coaches in college football. Aiden Fry has decided to leave Iowa, retiring after this season. Right, and of course, Joe Paterno at the top of that list. He's been at uh, Penn State for his entire lifetime. But stability breeds success, and that's what Don Nealon has done in his 19 years at West Virginia. Play action, Bolger. All day to throw, and he puts it on the money. Once again, a terrific-looking throw. Sean Foreman with the catch, a gain of 11 yards, stopped by Javon Allen. And take a look at right here, that's Foreman on the out. Just a little curl pattern, the ball is delivered on time, makes the completion. Nothing dramatic, nothing tricky, it's just a throw and catch. Great protection by those fifth-year offensive linemen, the three in the middle, Bucanis, DeGraw, and Dunnigan. Third down and one from the 37. Play action again, Bolger throwing on the run, caught, bet with the catch inside the 30. Hornack with the tackle, a gain of nine, and a first down. And right now, West Virginia's just having their way. They can really do whatever they want. You know, West, uh, Amos Zeraway is quiet because they don't really need him. And I thought it was funny when he told us that uh, when he came to West Virginia, they had gone through a number of coaches, and he felt that he'd be at West Virginia for four years, one way or the other, and it looked to him at first that it would be the other. <laughs> <laughs> the other, huh? <laughs> 19 years later, he's still there, winning a lot of games. Bolger, and it's broken up. Shafan Allen 
Nice looking play for the junior from Passaic, New Jersey. There's Don Nealon, option quarterback at Bowling Green. Head coach at Bowling Green, too, then a Michigan assistant a couple of years, and then West Virginia head coach, 1982, 1998. You know, it's interesting when good coaches are able to keep their assistants, and certainly Don nealon has been able to do that much the way like a, a guy like Joe Paterno does. And after this play, I'm going to tell you what he said, how he keeps those fine assistant coaches in there. Second down and 10 from the 28. Zeroway, big opening. Amos Zeroway, stutter step, gets down to the six. Seth Hornack hauled him down, but a 22-yard gain for Famous Amos. Watch Famous Amos on this. Seth Hornack did well to stop him. He gets through the line, and then watch his stop-and-go move right now. Stop, hello, give you a leg. Take it away. Hornack did a great job to even, uh, you know, get a piece of him and bring down Zeroway. It, it seems like nowadays in the NFL, the running backs that can make you miss as opposed to the big, tall bruisers, 84 yards rushing. And he gives it to his fullback, Anthony Green, who smells the end zone. But the smaller guys, the Barry Sanders, the Garrison Hurst, those kind of guys with that escapability and guys that can juke you a little bit are really successful nowadays in the NFL as opposed to the big bruisers. Yeah, the big bruisers. I mean, there are a few guys that are larger in the NFL. You take a guy like Eddie George, he's a big, strong, tough back, but it's those little guys with the movement on, especially on artificial turf, where they're even faster. They're tough. Once again, it's green, and he gets to about the one-inch line. Anthony Green on the carry. Jamon Gibson there to stop him. And just uh, uh, quick to tie up that note on Don Neal, and he said, you know, keeps his coaches by treating them with respect, you know, like a family life, giving them time off, especially we're saying in June and July when there's not much going on. Hey, they have a family, they have a life outside of football. I give them that time off. That's why they stay with them for so long. He treats them with that respect. His offensive coordinator, Dan Simra, former head coach at the University of Toledo. Third down, goal to goal from the one. Bulger scrambling, throws, caught, touchdown. Fourth TD of the game for Mark Bulger. Mark Corman. Mark Corman with the catch, a backup tight end. In the back of the end zone, I mean, one of the things you have to admire about Mark Bulger is his calm under fire. Here's a little play action fake. He rolls around the other side. Corman's coming all the way across the field. He's way in the back of the end zone. He's actually with, with Foreman, and don't know who he's throwing to, but Corman came up with the catch and fourth touchdown. And the extra point is good. Nine minutes and 51 seconds remaining in the third quarter, all West Virginia. Seven, West Virginia leading Pittsburgh, nine minutes and 51 seconds remaining. And Mark Corman with his first touchdown reception of the season. And the drive, eight plays, 46 yards. Took three minutes and 33 seconds to score. And he is a happy guy on the sidelines. Mark Bolger, though, four touchdown passes. It ties his career high. He had four versus Virginia Tech this year. Also threw four interceptions in that game. Here's Shafon Allen from the two. Running it straight ahead. Allen has a seam. Breaks into the open field. Outside. Shafon Allen. Stutter step. That has to be dragged down by Fisher again. Hey, where'd this kid come from? That's a rerun of an earlier five yards. And he was not scheduled to run back kicks because Hank Poteet is the normal kick return man. But I think they found themselves one in Siobhan Allen. Allen did this in the first half as well. A brilliant run back came up the same sideline and met the same man, Fisher, along the sidelines. Here they are again. Last time, Fisher grabbed him by the face mask and brought him down here. He was able to knock him out of bounds. Fisher was to save a touchdown. Deja vu. <laughs> Pittsburgh with the football at their opponent's 35-yard line. 
Here's Shafon Allen. Shafon Allen, I mean, yeah, I think it's safe to say that he will be returning kicks from now on. And maybe they should figure out a ball, how to get him the ball on offense. He's great in the open field. What speed and quickness. False start against Pittsburgh, and it pushes them five yards back. Now they start first and 15 from the 40. Here's the counter. Barlow looking for a hole, and he tumbles forward and gets close to the 35, make it the 36-yard line. Kyle Caden with the tackle. I got an idea. Take the kick returner, Shafon Allen, put him in the backfield <laughs> for Pittsburgh and let him run the ball. Let him do it. He's got some of that burst that you need, that real speed, which Pittsburgh doesn't have that in their backfield now. They don't have the breakaway threat. It was a last-minute substitution, not only to return kicks, but also in the secondary for Hank Cortit out with a knee injury. Game-time decision. And Lido drag down. Gary Stills, second sack of the day. The sack man who's missed four games this season because of a knee injury. You know, he had a knee injury. That kneecap came out of place the same way it did a year ago. But Gary Stills is obviously back to full speed because Lido, who has good speed, Great mobility, can't run away from number 55. He is so quick. You know, he's getting near the end of a, a brilliant career at West Virginia and looking forward to playing in the NFL. And this is all part of it, trying to build some momentum, some stats, so they'll go high in the draft. The senior from Trenton, New Jersey. Third down and 19. Lytle rolling, backside pressure. Got away, looking down the field, has Grimm. Charles Fisher got a hand on the ball and broke it up. And what I notice about these West Virginia defensive backs, they make up a lot of ground, Doc, when the ball's in the air. They certainly do, but Matt Lytle has eyes in the back of his head. Watch Antoine Lake bearing down the big man. He somehow sees him and gets away and then throws it downfield, hoping, hoping somehow his receiver, Grimm, can come up with the catch. Tipped around, incomplete. Greg DeBolt standing at the 43. Swoop back deep. High spiraling kick. And it's caught at the 14. 31 yard punt, no return. 7.55 to go back to Pittsburgh after this. For those guys in West Virginia leading Pittsburgh 38 to 7. Seven minutes and 55 seconds remaining in the third quarter play. I'm Gus Johnson along with John Dockery, Gary Apple. Three River Stadium in Pittsburgh. I'm sure this community is still a little shocked after the Steelers lost that controversial game yesterday. Seen right here on CBS. Zeroway with blockers to the 20 and he's down at the 22 yard line ryan gonzalez and nick cole with the tackle now tomorrow on cbs it's the country music association's 40th anniversary celebration superstars and all-time legends join together for some duets you won't see anywhere else don't miss the cma's 40th anniversary on cbs that's tomorrow and how about garth brooks this week Sold a million copies of his album. You talk about a superstar, huh? A million copies. Most copies sold, I believe, ever in one week. As they, uh, as Garth Brooks, uh, he took over for some rock band. What was that band called? What was that band? Uh, well, uh, I think it must have been Pearl Jam. Pearl Eddie Jam. Better, huh? well, how about that? You believe that, folks? That's Doc. Well, Pearl Jam with Eddie Better. That's good. Folks, anyone who knows me will know that Gus Johnson gave me the answer to that question. You know, I'm still, I'm still with you. Your know, daughters are going to be excited. They are. You, you should have you not said anything. I'm still the Beatles and Bruce Springsteen kind of guy. Third down and two from the 25. Bulger far side. Caught. And it's Saunders with the catch wrapped up by Chuck Brown. I know you like 
some of that Pacific Northwest grunge music. <laughs> Nirvana. And Okay, you know, just because I'm a guy from another millennium, you don't have to rub it in here as we approach 2000. <laughs> First down and 10 for the Mountaineers from their own 31-yard line. 6-13 and counting to go in the third quarter. They lead it 38-7. Bulger going long for Antonio Brown, incomplete. Chuck Brown there on the play. And Antonio Brown, a player they're very high on, a freshman from Miami, Florida, Miami Central High School. He played for his cousin and his assistant coach, Puppy Wright, at Miami Central. And Puppy Wright is a former West Virginia Mountaineer. Uh-huh. So you see the connections. connections. You see those connections, which make a difference. 19 players on this West Virginia team from Miami. From Florida, rather. Second down and 10 from the 31. Bolger again passing, and it's caught Foreman with the catch. And a first down. Sean Foreman, a senior from Chesapeake, Virginia, gain of 13, went to Indian River High School, the same high school as Alonzo Mourning, the former Georgetown and current Miami Heat basketball star. And these have to be the two best receivers, David Saunders and Sean Foreman, and you add Pat Green and Corey Ivey and, and Brown to that mix, and they have five, five top-notch top -notch receivers for West Virginia. First and 10 from the 44. Amos Zeraway pops it outside, and Zeraway gets inside Pittsburgh territory. DJ Jenkins back in the game after twisting his knee, makes the tackle, and it's a gain of eight yards. You know, when you talk to Don Nealon about the year, and of course West Virginia coming into the, this year in the Big East, a lot of people said they would win, win the Big East, but uh, one game he said we really didn't play, and that was Virginia Tech, which we lost 27-13. That was after a tough loss to Miami, 34-31. Amos Zeraway closing in on 100 yards, 19 carries, 99 yards. Second and three from the 49. Bolger down the seam, back wide open to the 20. Chuck Brown with the tackle, but a gain of 29 yards, and you see why Nealon likes Anthony Betts. You can't help but like him as a big target at 6'6", but the reason it's open, Gus, is that they're trying to help the corners, playing with two backup corners, Pittsburgh is. Allen and Brown out there for Poteet and Creighton, and they're trying to help with the safeties in two coverage. That leaves the middle wide open for Becht because the linebackers aren't getting any drop. Beck four receptions, 57 yards, and a touchdown. And you would, in a sense, you'd think that West Virginia may start running the football, but looks like Pittsburgh is really ga uh, ganging up on the run as you take a look at Bulger's numbers. Ty's career high. Uh, yeah, look at that. Touchdowns. Four touchdowns, 334 yards, and he's only a junior, folks. Saunders, the motion man. Zeraway. And Zeraway wrapped up and driven out of bounds. I want you to use your x-ray vision. Did he get a yard to go over 100 or did he not? <laughs> Let's go downstairs to Gary Apple who's standing by with a proud papa. All right, guys, thanks very much. Jim Bolger, father of Mark, is with us. The one thing I'm amazed about when I see your son is he's not a huge guy, but yet he's not afraid, Jim, to stand in there and look for two and three different receivers. Yeah, Mark, he, he has vision. He can see the field when he's back. He, he goes from one receiver, second receiver, third receiver. Uh, he's 6'3", about 2'10 now, too, so he's he's gained some weight since he's been in West Virginia. I know when he came out of high school, he was only about a buck 69. Yes. Wasn't uh, recruited by Pittsburgh, even though he grew up here. How disappointed was he by that? Well, Mark really wanted to go away. So uh, I think if Pitt was real interested, he probably wouldn't have went there anyway because he wanted to go away to school. And uh, personally, it was it was great that he's a West Virginia like an hour and a half down the road. So it worked out real well. Jim, thanks very much. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, guys, a holding penalty against West Virginia. 
backs them up to the 30-yard line, first and 22 from the 30. And a running play. Anthony Green Anthony running Green the football. The Gibson with the tackle. Mark Bolger coming to West Virginia, 165 yards. Remember what uh, Neyman said to about him? He said, he was such a skinny kid. I was afraid if a linebacker hit him, would have to put him in a box. <laughs> but you know, he had that great release. He had a presence and, uh, hey, why didn't he go to Notre Dame? I mean, Dad went there, didn't play much behind Joe Theismann, who was not a bad quarterback. Well, thank goodness he didn't go to Notre Dame because he's really tossing the outfit this Mountaineer squad. Looking in the end zone again for Foreman. Touchdown. Wow, what a catch. 30 yards, but a flag on the play. You know, Don Nealon talks about his physical wide receivers, guys who are 6'2", and will go up and get the ball. And that time, Foreman just did that over the 5-foot, 10-inch Chuck Brown in the end zone. We'll have to wait to see what the penalty is. On the defense, penalty is declined. Result of the play, touchdown. Sean Foreman, eighth touchdown of the season. West Virginia really piling it on now, 44-7. to seven. Foreman, also a great basketball player in high school. His intramural team has won the three-on-three -three championship at West Virginia two years running. Extra point is good. He's got five catches, 115 yards. Mismatch on the outside all day long with the injuries at cornerback for Pittsburgh. This time, Brown's looking inside. Foreman just, what concentration, pulls the ball away from him. 3-0-2 remaining in the third. West Virginia up big. Third quarter, 3-0-2 to go, and West Virginia leads it 45-7. Gus Johnson along with John Dockery. Gary Apple from Three Rivers Stadium. Surprised that uh, West Virginia continues to throw the ball? I'm a little bit surprised. I'm not so much surprised with the dominance by West Virginia. They're just a better team with a lot more talent. Pittsburgh held tough early, and then it just, the wheels came off the wagon. And a squib kick picked up at the 32-yard line. And that's where the Panthers will begin tomorrow. It's a college football doubleheader here on CBS Sports. First, Joe Hamilton and the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets face two-way threat champ Bailey and the Georgia Bulldogs. Then the Big East title is at stake when Edger and James and the Hurricanes hit on Donovan McNabb and the Orangemen of Syracuse and stay on top of all the goings-on with Tim Brando, Brick James, and Lou Holtz on college football today. You know, it's interesting you talk about that game tomorrow, Miami at Syracuse. Oh, there's the man. Oh, with the big hands on the sideline, Sean Foreman got the touchdown. But that game tomorrow, Miami pretty tough on the road. They beat these West Virginia Mountaineers in Morgantown. They're 4-0 on the road. They're going up to Syracuse to see who walks away with the Big East crown. Should be a terrific game. Some outstanding players in that game, too. Both quarterbacks, McNagg, Covington, and some pretty good runners. Edward James for Miami. Rob Conrad, the runner for Syracuse. Two good backs. Brandon Williams in the game now for Pittsburgh. Gets to the 40-yard line, making the 41 before being dropped. And you talked about Sean Foreman. Well, first, the Big East standings. Miami-Syracuse battle it out for the top spot in the Big East Conference tomorrow on CBS. Virginia Tech at 5-2. West Virginia will improve to 5-2. Great How about game Rutgers tomorrow. this season? Five and six. Terry Shea got a new contract and won two games in the conference. They're starting to improve in New Brunswick. Nice to see them move. It's been a long drought over there in New Brunswick, so nice to see Rutgers doing better than normal. Second down and four. The pitch. And it's the freshman. Running the football and some hard running around the left side for Brandon Williams, who coming out of high school, he's from New Kensington, Pennsylvania. He was one of the top 20 running backs in the country, and I thought it was interesting his comment. He said he never knew how regimented and difficult it was to play college football. Welcome to the Big East and welcome to uh, Division 1A. It's a little bit of a shock for players coming out because in high school you're such a big star. You're going to play on this level. You've probably been the big fish 
in a small pond and then you move up and it just gets a lot tougher, a lot more demanding, mentally, emotionally, and physically. 32 option. Lytle keeping, and he should receive the first down. Edmonds there to grab it. It looks like he did get the first down. I'm going to put you on, on the spot as we watch this play again. This is the option. It's just some diversity for the offense. Obviously, Lytle with a good mobility, good athlete running ability, is able to run it, turns it upfield, and picks up the first down. I was going to put you on the spot. Who do you like in that game tomorrow? Miami at Syracuse. You know what I think Donovan McNabb is? Just an awesome talent. I believe he's thrown only two interceptions the entire season. I'm going with Syracuse. I like, I mean, okay, I can go with that. Now. James has been awesome, though, in the last uh, four games, almost 600 yards rushing. Here's the reverse. off the edge, but look, he's not out of control. He reads it and makes the play on it coming back. A loss of 10 yards. Stills. They compare him to Lawrence Taylor. Oof, that's a large comparison. I mean, Lawrence Taylor is so good for so long. Still has got a long way to go before he can be spoken of in that kind of a play. Lido over the middle and it's incomplete. You know what Stills does so well? I mean, everybody talks about it, and he even at times wears it on his armband. He'll wear ER, which means edge rusher. He just gets on the edge, and those first two steps coming around the corner, you've seen the guys in the NFL, the Bruce Smith type of guys, they come around the corner so fast, the offensive tackle can't get up in time, and they rush the pass like few people can. And Gary Stills is that kind of a pass rusher. Like Derek Thomas for the Kansas City Chiefs. The question mark, though, with Gary is his health. Can he stay healthy? He's had that knee problem, that dislocated knee, two years in a row. He seems to be totally healthy right now. Third down in the long 20. Lider flushed out of the pocket, running. Looking downfield, and it's picked off. Fisher. Fisher with the interception. And with six seconds remaining in the third quarter, Pittsburgh comes up empty again. You know, it's all on Lytle's shoulder. He's just trying to carry too much of the load here. He just shakes out the pocket and forces the ball downfield. When you're down uh, by this kind of a score, tries to force it. Cornerback Fisher is just hanging out, waiting in the weeds for an easy INT. Second interception of the day for Lytle. Third turnover of the day for Pittsburgh. West Virginia with the football at their own 45. Out of the offset eye, Zaraway the deep man. Bulger gives it Statue of Liberty. Zaraway. And he gets over the 45-yard line. A first down at the 43, a gain of 12. And that's the end of the third quarter with the score, West Virginia leading it 45 to 7. We'll return to Three Rivers Stadium after this message and a word from your local station. Gary Apple on the sidelines. Don Neelan still throwing the football. A curious situation for West Virginia leading Pittsburgh by a score of 45 to 7. In motion, by action again. Over the middle, Beck with the catch. Still throwing, Beck running to the 25. Tackled by DJ Dinkin. I hear it in your voice, Gus Johnson. You're suggesting that maybe 45 to 7, that maybe Don Nealon should let up a little bit. And, uh, you know, I can, I can see that. I mean, Don Nealon is a gentleman. He's not a guy to rub it in or run it up. Yeah, but the question is, are you a gentleman? when you just allow your football team and your players to continue to play football. 
Yeah, yeah, but I don't agree with that. He has all of his stars still in the game. All of his wide receivers, he's had Mark Bolger in there, Amos Zaraway, they're all in the game. Put in some substitutes, give some other people a chance to play. Play action again, Bolger in the end zone. Touchdown, what a catch. Seven. It's DJ Dinkins in the end zone, spinning around, had a chance at the interception, but didn't have enough agility to spin around to make it. Take a look at it, folks, right here. The ball is thrown up, and it's just Ivy. Watch, see him in front there, Dinkins? Had a shot, the ball's tipped up, touchdown, extra point, 52 to seven. This is a route, this is a route. And we still have 14 minutes and 25 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. Fifty-two to seven, West Virginia leads Pittsburgh. Mark Bolger is thrown for 409 yards and six touchdowns. And Doc, I'm starting to agree with you. I mean, uh, I think West Virginia really—they're starting to demoralize these young kids on this. Pittsburgh team. 52 to 7. What is one of the cornerstones of sports, athletics, college football? It's sportsmanship. I don't think it does any good to run it up and demoralize uh, a team like Pittsburgh in this situation. Short kick picked up at the 20 yard line to the 35 yard line. That's where Pittsburgh begins. RJ English returning it. It is well known that children and adults alike get a special kick out of looking up at the Goodyear blimps. And for nearly 75 years, the Goodyear blimps have loved looking down on special events. Today, Spirit of Akron is doing the looking down, providing our aerial view. And certainly West Virginia is looking down on Pittsburgh today with a score of 52 to 7. And uh, you know what? I, I don't care. I mean, you, can, you might say, well, you know, West Virginia is 26th in the polls. They would like to be in the top 25. I don't care about that. This isn't about polls. Get rid of the polls. I don't think you should uh, to do this to a team. No, I just don't know if Don Nealon hasn't taken out some of his starters. Give someone else a chance to play. I know they're going to go to a bowl game, and it will most likely be the Gator Bowl, and it may be against Notre Dame. So you want your team sharp with momentum, but this is a little too much to do to Walt Harris in his only second year trying to rebuild a once proud program. So Pittsburgh starting from their own 21. Side handoff. Now let's go downstairs to Gary Apple. Okay, Gus, we're trying to figure out who the biggest man on campus was in the history of pit football. Well, you know, we have to go back to 1958, a man who roamed the campus from 58 to 60, big Mike Ditkin. You know, back in those days, it was a two-way game. He not only played big on the defensive line, but also, of course, a great tight end, 58 to 60 for Ditkin. He was also a, uh, uh, a forward on the basketball team, an outfielder on the baseball team, and the intramural wrestling champion. Talk about a big man on campus and of course now the coach of the Saints guys and he has that Saints team playing inspired football this season and he was something nice still a tough guy he was always a tough guy Mike Ditka will you ever forget him at Chicago with the Bears some of the confrontations oh, oh yeah. my <laughs> especially the one with uh, Jim Harbaugh now some other uh, fit coaches that are now in the NFL Marty Schottenheimer head coach for the Kansas City Chiefs, and Dave Wonstadt, who was an offensive tackle here. Wait a minute, are you kidding me? I mean, he's got that whole uh, defensive mentality. A tough guy himself, Dave Wonstadt. I'm surprised he was an offensive lineman. Brandon Williams, no room. He loses yardage, maybe two on the play. KC Schiller with the tackle along with Ryan Brady. Holding on the offense, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. 
So uh, Matt O'Connor back in the game at quarterback for Pittsburgh. And here's a look at our CBS Sports Line stat of the day. Total yards, 516 for West Virginia. For complete college football coverage, go to cbs.sportsline.com. First and a long 24 for O'Connor. Williams over the 20, drags people up to the 23 where Mark Thurston tackles him. Now Don Nealon has gotten some of his backup players in on defense, so we'll see what happens when they get the ball back. And you know, last year it was a, um, yeah, there's Gary Stills on the sideline, the fine rush linebacker for West Virginia. That's where he should be in a situation like this. Two sacks today for Gary Stills. O'Connor out of the backfield, drop. Williams lost it and he takes a pop after dropping the football. like Mark Plants may have planted one on him. And you know, when you talk about Diane Nealon being so successful at West Virginia, I mean, just a, a coach that is, this is will be when he goes this year, will be his 12th ball game. You mentioned that earlier, but all of those winning seasons, 16 winning seasons out of 19 years, that, that's pretty phenomenal for a coach. Third down and 19. A very nice catch by Latif Grimm. I mean, watch him right here. He stays with the ball in the middle of a bunch of white jerseys. West Virginia, the ball is tipped. And Grimm keeps his concentration. And look at as he's being hit, he's able to pull it in for the completion. Not enough, though, for the first down. Rings on the punt team for Pittsburgh. Greg DeBolt. End over end kick. Swoop lets it take a bounce. Picks it up at the 10. And he goes down at the 13. 50 yard punt, three yard return, 11.06 to go in the fourth quarter. NASDAQ MX College Football on CBS is sponsored by First Union, the United States Marine Corps, Nissan, and by Nasonex. Welcome back to Pittsburgh where the West Virginia Mountaineers are clobbering the Panthers 52 to 7 with 11 minutes and 6 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. Walt Harris as opposed to Don Nealon, he's traveled a long way to get to where he is right now in a number of places. So many places. Nealon's have basically been a coach at West Virginia for 19 years. The other head coaching job was Bowling Green, but Walt Harris in his second year second year here at Pittsburgh has been many, many places both in college and in the pros. Most in Tennessee, head coach of Pacific, Quarterback for the Mountaineers. New York Jets, running the football and now the second string players in the game for West Virginia. New quarterback Brad Lewis and take a look at the Walt Harris file, where he's been. Look at that, huh? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten places that he's been. The journey can be one that makes one or two stops away in Newland, or it can be many places like Ohio State, 95 to 96, and then second year here at Pittsburgh. And you mentioned the New York Jets and Tennessee and a whole bunch of stops for Walt Harris. And the Panthers running the football with all the second string guys in. Swoop is in at tailback. He's number nine. Also number 34 in at fullback, McIntyre. 
Simon, you know, when we were talking about Walt Harris last year, I mean, he did, he just pulled some magic in Pittsburgh when he was six and five, went to that bowl game. He was actually the Big East Coach of the Year in his first year at Pittsburgh last year. This year, the expectation's higher. He just wasn't able to live well with them. They're still rebuilding. They need to get more talent and, and recruit better. They were hoping for a, a good showing here today to help with the recruiting. And the offense, five yard penalty, still third down. So the substitutes in the game for both teams now. With Three Rivers Stadium as night has fallen. West Virginia with the football, third down and 12. The day is over for Mark Bolger, the junior quarterback. Look at those numbers. Look at that number there, 407 yards. Antonio Brown on the reverse, and he is dropped. Brown dropped by Kareem Thompson. And West Virginia forced to punt it away. Gus, if you go behind the numbers for Bolger, a little bit 407 yards passing, you'll realize he was going against a defense that lost both their starting cornerbacks as a penalty on that play against West Virginia. If you take a look at the play right here. A illegal block in the back, as you hear in the background on this play, right there. You see the number 30? He made the play right there, number 30 did Seth Abraham, wide receiver, with the penalty. Brings on Jay Taylor to punt. With Tim Stein back deep. End over eight kick for Taylor. Stein at the 45. Over the 40, and he gets to the 37. 35-yard punt, 8-yard return. Fourth quarter, 9.17 to go in the fourth quarter. West Virginia and Pitt, the backyard brawl. Hasn't turned out the way uh, it turned out last year in three overtimes, but this kid coming back home has had a terrific game. 407 yards for Mark Bolger, the West Virginia quarterback. First down and 10 from the 37. Play action. And it's incomplete. But I just wanted to finish on my, my thought about Bolger and his numbers. Behind those numbers, he was playing against a defense. Bolger with uh, all of his touchdowns. I mean, six touchdowns. Wow. But he was playing against a defense where both corners were out. Hank Poteet was out with a with a knee, and then Trey Creighton was hurt early, um, Gus, when he was knocked out. And uh, the good news from the hospital is that he appears to be okay. So the numbers are terrific. And I'm not taking anything away from Mark Bolger. It's just he did it against a defense that was really banged up, especially at the cornerback position. Second and 10. O'Connor. Ball is caught. Murphy tackled inside the 15-yard line. Terry Murphy, a gain of 24 yards. Jerry, just, Jerry um, Porter stopped it. Just about to say, just a year ago in a day, Terry Murphy was catching a pass in triple overtime to beat West Virginia when Pittsburgh beat West Virginia last year in this backyard brawl game. What a difference a year can make, huh? Terry Murphy missed two games this year with the shoulder injury. Last year he had 13 receptions for touchdowns. That's a Big East record. Receiving touchdowns, 13. Well, Marco Battaglia's record of 10 when he was at Rutgers. And they whistle and fly. Dead ball. Delay a game by the offense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Amos Zaraway. Another big game for him. 110 yards rushing on 20 carries. His 21st 100 yard game. And as usual, they ganged up against the run. They, they certainly did, but they left themselves vulnerable to the pass. First and, uh, down and 15. When it happens with Zaraway, West Virginia usually wins. You saw the graphic 16 and 4 when he's 100 plus yards. 
First and 15 from the 18, underneath, ball caught. Jerry Porter on the tackle again, and this time the catch made by Grimm. You know, Amos Zeroway is the first player in uh, West Virginia history to rush for over 1,000 yards in his first three seasons. And a big question around Morgantown and around the Big East as well, whether Amos Zeroway will come back for another year. Uh, certainly he has a future in the pros, he risk injury, but certainly, as you mentioned earlier, the stakes are high. West Virginia should be good again next year. He might have a shot at the Heisman. Second and eight. Far side, Grimm with the catch, and he's slung down at the nine yard line by Charles Fisher. Last year, Amos Zaraway was 10th in the Heisman voting. I'm sure he'll climb up on that this season, and if he were to come back, he'd be in good shape for next year. All-time career-leading rusher in the Big East. The guys we mentioned earlier, over five and a half yards a carry. I mean, he's just a spectacular back. He's strong, benches over 400 pounds in the weight room. Can catch the ball out of the backfield, a complete back. O'Connor in the end zone, incomplete. Ball intended for Grimm. But That's Fisher says, nope. Six minutes and 55 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter of play. West Virginia leading it 52 to seven. And this game started off slowly. Barely any scoring in the first quarter. A Taylor 38 yard field goal, but in the second quarter, West Virginia opened it up. Bolger to Ivy for 27 yards, then the Saunders for 22. Hit back for a four yard touchdown. Empty backfield. O'Connor on the slant, incomplete, overthrown. Latif Grimm, the intended receiver for Lo Bastine defensively. Six minutes, 51 seconds remaining, and we'll be back to Pittsburgh after this. And welcome back to Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh, 6.51 to go. All West Virginia in this game, the backyard brawl. The Mountaineers have really socked it to this Pittsburgh team. First down and 10 at the six yard line. Play action, Brad Lewis intercepted. Interception return, and Pittsburgh, now they have 13 points. They were saving those fireworks for something, I guess. Purifoy just in, a, in his zone, picks that off, takes it in a poor throw by Lewis. Purifoy from Homestead, Pennsylvania. Big play for him. And the extra point is good. 6.40 to go in the fourth quarter. Take another look at the interception. Purifoy back in the middle. And Lewis looking over. He's waiting for his receiver to come across him. He throws a little bit of a sidearm. But he had two linebackers there. Throws it to Purifoy who just takes it into the corner for the touchdown. forget next Saturday, NASDAQ Amex College Football features one of the most illustrious rivalries in all of sport. When the cadets and the middies clash in the Army-Navy game, join CBS Sports for all the excitement of this uniquely American spectacle. Scores and records do not matter in an Army-Navy game. It's a tradition, the pageantry. You know, I did a bunch of those games on the sidelines, and the stories are wonderful. You know, some, some fine athletes participating in the game, but it's just the whole tradition and the history of that series, Army-Navy, next Saturday, not tomorrow, but a week from tomorrow. 
Well, the band still getting a nice workout here in Pittsburgh. Doesn't matter what the score is for those guys. It really does, and they're doing their thing and, uh, you know, trying to support their team. And look, when you get down to it, it's only a football game. Yeah, it's a little embarrassing for Walt Harris and his uh, Pittsburgh Panthers, but a huge win on the other side for West Virginia. They kick it away, Antonio Brown from the four. Straight ahead, Brown over the 30, up to the 33. 25-yard return, Chuck Brown with the special teams tackle. Now tonight, CBS is the place for great family entertainment. Raggedy Ann and Andy come to life with your favorite ice skating stars in Snowden's Raggedy Ann and Andy Holiday Snow. Then, Team USA takes on the world in the hottest skating event on ice, Ice Wars. Great family entertainment tonight on CBS. Carla Minsky. I was a little surprised you weren't quite sure what Raggedy Ann and Andy is. I mean, I have two daughters, so I know all about those. I mean, uh, but a nice night of family entertainment on CBS. You can sit around with the family and watch. And flags on the play once again. So I, I'm sure your wife, she can't wait to get home, you, you to get home, and you guys sit in front of that TV in Brooklyn and watch Ice Wars. Leftover turkey, <laughs> waiting Good for ball. me. Illegal substitution by the offense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. <laughs> turkey Day, what a feast for Don Nealon and his West Virginia Mountaineers. Now they will go to eight and three. They'll probably be bound for the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville. Possibility of playing Notre Dame. First and 15 from the 28. And Purifoy with the tackle. Gary Apple, what do you have? All right, guys, this began as a very frightening day for Pittsburgh. On the opening play from scrimmage, Trey Creighton was badly injured. He lost all feeling in his upper body, but the latest we have is he remains at Presbyterian Hospital, but all of the feeling has returned. Everything at the moment checks out okay. They are just running further tests. Guys, back up to you. All right, Gary, great news for Trey and this Pittsburgh team and his family. A very scary moment. Reminded us of Reggie Brown, former Detroit Lions linebacker last year against the Jets. Intercepted D.J. Dinkins with the catch. Dinkins at the 40, flags on the play, gets up to the 35. Here the ball is just, I mean, this ball is just poorly thrown downtown. No timing between the receiver and the quarterback. Dinkins playing the deep half of the field comes up with the interception. So DJ Dinkins picks it off and it's been tough for Brad Lewis so far. First down. It's a good thing for Brad Lewis though. He's a freshman. You know, he could, he is a future 6'3", 220 pounds, good size. Don Nealon just wants to get him a little action, you know, some real live action. Totally different than practicing. Look at Nealon talking to him. Come on, huh? what are you throwing that ball for? It was a lousy throw, Don. I agree with you. It was, he's saying, hey, look, didn't you see the safety? You can't throw that ball. First and 10 from the 45. Connor picked up. Returns the favor. Charles Fisher stepped in and just swiped it away. Fourth turnover of the day for Pitt. Matt O'Connor in for Matt Lytle. He has it picked off here. The ball is there's no room on the sideline for his receiver. That's one of the problems. And Fisher just makes a good move. Latif Grimm was the receiver out there. Actually, Latif did well to hold on because if he didn't, Fisher is gone. Watch this now. Fisher playing the move all the way and it just drives on the ball the way you're supposed to. He closed his cushion real well, Fisher, and just closed on the ball. Another new quarterback in the game for West Virginia. Jawan Sider. And they give it to Swoop to run it. 
Well, the best news of the day for the Pittsburgh Panthers came from their basketball team. Today, they defeated Kentucky 68 to 56 at the Puerto Rico shootout. And Vontigo Cummings had 20 points. Pitt, Ralph Willard's team starting 6-0 on the season. Pittsburgh, if their basketball team only gave their football team a few of those points. Holding <laughs> on the offense, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. Well, they beat Kentucky by 12, and I don't think even if they gave them 12, it would help them very much today. Not enough today. The dominant team. I mean, it's simple. West Virginia just a lot better football team than Pitt at the moment. Walt Harris trying to build Pitt back. He knows it's going to take a number of years. They hand it off. Swoop. Tackle by Gonzalez. Now, Sunday, the NFL on CBS showcases regional action. The Bills have been flying with Doug Flutie. Now he returns home to face Drew Bledsoe and the Patriots, fresh off their Monday night magic. Some of you will see Mark Brunel and the Jaguars tangle with the Bengals, or Steve McNair and Ricky Waters collide when the Oilers battle the Seahawks. Check local listings beginning with the NFL today. Jim Nance, Bonnie Bernstein, Marcus Allen, Brent Jones, and George. Gets to the 40. Seth Hornack with the tackle. Here's a young man that all season his coaches say Seth Hornack, uh, he's a tremendous hitter. He's been the most productive player of all time, and he's of, of this season rather, and he's been playing his heart out. You know, when we talked to him yesterday, remember what he said when he, what about the game of football? What do you like so much? And he just said, you know, I love contact. I love that part of the game. I love to come up and hit and make the play at the line of scrimmage. He's a good hitter, 3.6 grade point average in economics, and he's changing his major. He wants to be a chiropractor. And this ball is up and incomplete. 3.40 to go. If he keeps playing the game the way he's playing at uh, strong safety, he's only 5'10", 190 pounds. He might need a chiropractor. Might have to work on himself. Said he gets adjusted every week, also gets a massage. You know, you look at Don Nealon, and we talked about 19 years, and over those 19 years of Nealon at uh, West Virginia, guess how many coaches Miami has had, it's in Syracuse has had. It's amazing. Miami's had four coaches in that period. And Syracuse, three coaches. You know, just stability helps you to win. And BC has had five coaches. Pitt has had six coaches in those 19 years. 36-yard punt. Stein with the fair catch. 3.33 remaining in the fourth quarter. We'll return to the game in just a moment. Three thirty-three to go in the fourth quarter. All West Virginia, Gus Johnson, John Dockery, and Gary Apple with you from Three Rivers Stadium. And this game started slowly. Only three points scored in the first quarter. But West Virginia blew it up in the second quarter, outscoring Pittsburgh 28-7. They outscored them 14 nothing in the third quarter, and that's been the difference. First down and 10 from the 24. O'Connor under pressure, and he's dropped at the 15. Number 78 making the play for this West Virginia squad, and that's Osanosa. I think I said that right. Osanosa, 78. Interesting. Fourth sack of the day. And O'Connor probably wishes that Matt Lytle did a little better because Ospinosa is in there in a hurry. He has no chance to throw the ball at home. Second and 19. Side incomplete intended for... You know, Buffalo going to New England, I mean the log jam in the AFC East with Buffalo and, and the Jets and Miami. And you look at the game that Bledsoe put together last Monday night, a gutsy performance and, and to win that game and with the damaged finger and Flutie going back to New England. That's one heck of a consequences of that game in the AFC East. 
Brandon Williams running the ball over the 20. The duck what a story. In the ball league. The, yeah. 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 the little engine. I mean, there's so many good things about it. it Doug Flutie, and you talked to Flutie a few weeks ago, a chance to do that, and you, and you say to him, well, why did you come back from Canada? You were the MVP year in and year out there. Why well, come back to the NFL where no one believed you could play? And Flutie said, you know, I didn't want to be 50 years old sitting on my front porch in a rocking chair and never proving that I could play in the NFL. He's proved it. He's proven it this year. It's Antonio Brown, stutter step up to midfield, and he goes down inside Pittsburgh territory. 36-yard punt, 8-yard return. Also, the other big, big story in the NFL this season, Randall Cunningham and what he's done with Minnesota and that kid, Randy Moss. Wow. Yeah. Watch that game. Yes. I did watch the game. Whoa. You can't cover Randy Moss. He's too big. He's too fast. He catches too well. He's too slippery. Runs good patterns. The guy is almost unstoppable. And without Deion Sanders playing for Dallas, I mean, they were just in deep trouble from the beginning. Once again tonight on John Dockery and his family will be watching Raggedy Ann and Andy come to life with your favorite ice skating stars. Plus, Team USA takes on the world in the hottest skating event on ice. Stone's Raggedy Ann and Andy Holiday Show plus Ice Wars. Great family entertainment tonight on CBS. So West Virginia with the football at the 40-yard line. down the pitch and running to the near side you know the words back in there for this Mountaineer squad and it's Brandon Goins tackled by Pete Simonian the former Boston University player who transferred to Pitt and their program was canceled in 1997. A chance for guys who don't get much action to play, and it's a nice situation. They'll remember this later in life, getting into a game and, and getting some action. Second down and seven from the 44. One thirty to go. Fourth quarter action. And a nice run by Goins over the 45-yard line, down to the 44. D.J. Dinkins with the tackle 11-yard gain. That man's day is over. Amos Zaraway, another 100-yard gain for him, number 21 in his career. And the question now remains whether or not he'll come back to West Virginia for his senior season. You know, it's interesting, Amos Zaraway, no touchdowns today because it's really Mark Bolger's team, Mark Bolger's day. Six touchdowns for the quarterback from West Virginia. No one's again, hops through the hole. Tackled by Ryan Gonzalez. There's Bolger. What a day he had. What was it? 409 yards, Gus. Six touchdowns, 26 of 37 for the former Central Catholic star. Same school that Dan Marino played for. I'm sure Dan Marino would be uh, proud of Mr. Bolger today putting up those kinds of numbers, although it's against his former team. Here's the pitch. Going to the 40. 26 seconds to go. And West Virginia. Pete Simonian with the stop. West Virginia. They will let the clock run out. And they will be 8-3. Pittsburgh will finish 2-9. and nine. West Virginia probably on their way to the Gator Bowl. West Virginia 8-3, 5-2 in the Big East, and they win the backyard brawl convincingly this season. Don Nealon, his team heading to a bowl game for the 12th time in his 19-year career at West Virginia. So for John Dockery and Gary Apple, I'm Gus Johnson saying so long for Pittsburgh where the Mountaineers have defeated the Panthers 52-14. This has been a presentation.